Hello everybody, if it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me as always, my co-host Tyler. What's up buddy, how you doing? <laughs> Great man, good to be back. Sorry I couldn't join you last week. All good, all good. We we, we had a we had a pinch hitter come in, Paul was a champion. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was it was a great show. Uh, I definitely recommend people go check that out. Lots of engagement on what future army uh, should be part of the 4.0 cycle of release. Uh, Marty, welcome, buddy. Martin Orlando back on the show again. The Good Painter Stormcast, previously known as now Good Painter High Elf Lumineth, whatever you want to say, man. Marty, what army should be part of uh, the fourth 4.0 release? Uh, what army should be part of the 4.0 release? Not, um, not the like, I... launch box. I'm asking, like, over the course of okay. 4.0, what army, yeah, yeah. What new army uh, should there be? Um, I'm definitely in the camp of um, a Dark, El Dark Elf Boys Club. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had this grand idea, which I wish Games Workshop would implement, because we've had Order versus Chaos, Order versus Death, Order versus Destruction. What better way to reign in 4th edition than having the grand betrayal of the Dark Elves um, the uniting of, of uh, Malarion and Marathi into their own sort of, like, um, dark version of Order Dominion, as, you, as it were. Uh, I'd love to see what they do with um, Shadowkin reinventing... The, whatever they did to, to, to Lumineth as a successor for High Elves, I'd love to see that uh, for the, their take on Dark Elves. Okay. Are we calling Lumineth a success for High Elves? Is that, what we're, is that the official stance of this show? I'm not sure that's might be your official stance. I, your viewpoints. Uh, how about this? From, hold from on, I need that disclaimer. Viewpoints expressed yes. by guests of the show are not to be construed <laughs> as the official opinions of Warhammer Weekly or Vince Venturella Incorporated. And I and I can rephrase from an art design perspective. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> all good. Uh, uh -huh. All right. So, well, I mean, Marty's beautiful army was the uh, the the loading page and thumbnail for this show. I, he sent me a very nice picture mm -hmm. with his color professional photography and i was like well but what can we do of course we got to do that and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight we're going to be talking about getting your army painted we're going to do a little hobby uh ama we're going to talk about that our own tips tricks journeys experience tyler's new on the journey mm -hmm. uh martin is, is 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 well progressed obviously and i'm here to be color commentary uh, but of course first the normal stuff we've got the news what's up News, 40K rumor engine. Yep, it's some kind of rattling thing or whatever. Cool, it's a 40K thing. It's probably a rattling. It's got a pie in it. All right, next. Excellent. We've got a not 40K preview show coming up here. Let's see, July 1st, 2 p.m. British Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, I believe, yep. 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. Central. So, yeah, we're going to do a show of events. If it's good, if we actually get stuff, sure. If it's All actually right. worth talking about, we'll do a show on Saturday. We'll do a reaction show. We'll see if Tom's back. He's back in the States. I don't know if he's back home yet or not. I see he's in the chat. Hey, Tom, uh, your trip looked awesome. I hope you had a good time teaching people uh, and, and yeah. sharing your, your journey that you went on there uh, through uh, ancient civilization, the foundations of, of many cultures and religion and all of that, so... Look like a very fun teaching trip full of uh, mm. many gorgeous places from the ancient world. Uh, my, my Facebook algorithm is a big fan of Tom Lyons. Oh, sure. He's like at, at the top of the feed. Yeah, Kathy, he's replaced Kathy Ventrella. Uh oh, well, was, that can't happen. For, that, yeah. That can't happen. <laughs> uh, we gotta, I got to tell my wife to start posting some better stuff. That's, uh, that's unacceptable. <laughs> uh he says he's driving back now there you go all right well we'll keep you company on the drive tom have a safe drive yeah drive safe tom you have to listen to me for who knows how many hours yeah exactly exactly that's the the time will fly by tom all right so, yeah, uh, next up this doesn't suck we'll do a review yeah. show what yeah. else we have the harbingers coming out so dom bringers book one yeah. harbingers they've got a limited edition and then of course big news general's handbook which some folks may or may not have seen today. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. And then... We respect NDAs on this show. <laughs> we, we respect NDAs on this show. Uh, we've got some box sets coming out for the Regiments of Renown. So I believe there's four. One, two, three, four. Each with their own Harbinger. Yep. And yeah, I think the box sets look pretty good. Agreed. The, obviously, cool obviously we're, we're big fans of the Harbinger. I mean, let me here. say it this way. 
three of the four of these seem interesting. One yeah. of them contains fire slayers, and so by default and de facto is boring and not interesting. That's just I played I played Fire Slayers Tuesday, man, and I had a great time oh, against them. So there the, were a lot of nuances going the, on. The Fire Slayer player in the US showed up to your city to play <laughs> yeah, you. That's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very very thoughtful. We we had two at at ACO. That seems impossible. Did somebody was there a cloning experiment gone wrong? What happened there? Not necessarily, but close enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's fine. I'm sure, honestly, it was probably a better game than against, like, Soul Blight or something like that. Uh, so Yes, we, we had we had 11 Soul Blight players, and I'm glad I was I took the photo, which is now famous. Um, the, the, mm. the, what is it, the Daisy? What was the movie with the zombies where they're, like, like climbing over each other in mountains? I forget the name of it. I, I forget World the name War of it. World War yeah, Z. Yeah, World War Z, there we go. It was very much yeah. World War Z on an Age of Sigmar table. Sure. 180 yeah. zombies. Was this uh was this Brendan? I thought Brendan had two hundred zombies. Or was this not Brendan? Uh, not Brendan. Uh, okay. Bre- uh there, I, I can understand why certain Midwest folk won't 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 go all the way to New Jersey. They 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 might spontaneously combust. It's too far away. <laughs> yeah, it's it's way over there. Yeah. Uh yeah. no, but uh yeah, I I mean 180 zombies, I what what's the problem other than it's the most bent unit in the game? Why not just stack it up as high mm-hmm. as cord would, I guess. But yeah um so lots of stuff coming i assume they'll we'll probably get so you know we got the ghb we got the harbingers we're due for a battle scroll sometime soon change is on the horizon if if i may just add to the news there was they started the teaser rollout of the teaser images and today i presume we got the age of sigmar one because the manhole cover on the sewer grate is the specifically age of sigmar emblem uh so something skaven is mm-hmm. on the horizon uh and it's not for underworlds or Warcry, or i believe a different emblem would be on the manhole cover that's no, just that's fine theory. i mean like look you know if you try to throw a skaven box at me in the harbingers series and it's like a new hero like these boxes and a bunch of the old sculpts pass straight pass. could be the big could be big pig I, look first of all big pig better show up where's this where is big pig we were promised Big Pig a while back, and I have seen no additional news or anything about Big Pig. I want Big Pig. Uh, like, that's, yes, tomorrow. I want Big Pig now. Give. Mm. Give me. <laughs> Give me Pig. Uh, but anyways, like, my point is, that's not a Skaven redesign. Okay? No, mm-hmm. that's, that's, you don't get any credit for that. You don't get any credit. We got too many Skaven heroes as it is. Foot heroes is not a thing we are shy on. We're fine. We're right. all full here. We need State to... the obvious. It's the harbinger of a Skaven redesign. Ah, ah. That's, that's, I, uh, I can't believe I just said that. I, I can't stand puns. Is that a pun? I don't even know what a pun is anymore. I think it's I a get pun. tortured by them on a I weekly think, basis. Well, I think you get, you get full pun credit. All right. For that, <laughs> I can see no better transition. Let's move on and uh, let's go to some pick of the week. Uh, Marty, what do you want to share with everybody? Um, so I was racking my brain ever since you sent me the invitation. I'm like, what do I do for the pick of the week? And I started combing through YouTube videos, and you've either already spot- shown them on the show, or um, maybe they're just like a little too not quite relevant. And I was dipping into um, my niche, which is art design. I'm working on um, some cyberpunk flavored uh, 40k stuff for Nova this year. And uh, CD Projekt Red dropped, basically, they did an interview with some Japanese magazine on the design Bible for their video game. And it includes just this plethora of knowledge down from, like, graphic design about where they put advertisements and weathering on buildings to, like, the line forms on shapes for, like, all of these textures, even something as small as, like, a modem or, like, a car tire. And I just found it just it's 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 like catnip for for hobbyists trying to um, maybe add details to their miniatures or or build terrain or display boards. Not quite Age of Sigmar flavored, but definitely um, on point for the the topic of tonight's show. Love so it. that'll so be in the get, description. Deeply nerded out on hobby related stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, yeah. Tyler. What about you? What you got? Yeah. So I wanted to give a mention to someone who's been 
uh, rock star in the community in my mind for quite some time. Phil Morton, he was the founder of the Wargamer Online channel. Uh, they have been doing battle reports for a long while in AOS. So Phil is in a battle with cancer right now, and there's hope, but it's definitely serious. The channel has recently rebranded to Metabreaker, so folks can check that out. But I had heard from a friend of his who had asked if we might be able to do something to just let him know that we're thinking about him and what he's going through right now and hoping for the best uh, with the outcome. He's going through rounds of chemo uh, at the moment. So Phil had one of the, the great beards in the hobby. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a photo of him or, or seen one of his videos. Uh, fantastic beard. Unfortunately, he had to lose the beard with, with what he's going through. <laughs> so uh, a friend reached out with an idea of if anyone has a great beard or interested in growing one, maybe take a photo and send it over to Phil under hashtag beard for Phil, P-H-I-L. His Twitter handle is still at Wargamer Online. So if you get a chance, maybe shoot him a message. Again, just send him all the love that you can. I uh, have not had the pleasure of meeting him in person, but I've watched a lot of videos with this man over the last four or five years, and he's, he, he's just awesome. So, Phil, wishing you all the best, and yeah, buddy, kick cancer's ass. There you go. I, absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, link for all of that will be down below. Uh, for myself, uh, mine, I thought, since we're talking about getting your army painted and doing the hobby... I thought, why not shout out the uh, Trapped Under Plastic Boys, who this week on the weekly podcast were talking about repainting armies. They went back and looked at everything they've painted. Tragically short list between the two of them. Slackers. Yeah. Slackers. Mm. Okay, but they yeah, talked about... Yeah, I think about I did more in 80 days than they did in how many years? Count and kill teams and skirmish war bands. Come on, guys. Come on. But anyways, they were talking about, you know, if they did it again, what would they do and what would they change? And I think that's a really interesting exercise to go back and look through fresh eyes at your older work and say, like, you know, how would you have reattacked that or or, or done things now? Uh, is that That is, I think, a worthwhile endeavor, not to actually do it and repaint it, but to then, like, internalize some of the lessons and, and see how far you, you've come and grown over the time. So uh, link down below. Check that out. It's, it was a good episode. Uh, all right. With that... Speaking of a hobby-focused show, what would a hobby-focused show be without some hobby time? Uh, so this will just bleed right into the topic, realistically, but we'll, we'll still timestamp mm -hmm. it. Uh, but uh, Marty, you seem actively working on something right now. What, what are you up to there, bud? What have you been working on? Um, I am painting some of my Dark Angels for um, uh, Nova. Uh, to recap those who, who may not have seen me on the show before... Uh... I have never entered a 40k event at a convention in my life, uh, even though I have been playing 40k and fantasy and Lord of the Rings since I was a little kid. Uh, when I was old enough to go to conventions, I would always go to the Fantasy GT or and now the Age of Sigmar event. Uh, so this is going to be a big first for me. I signed up for the 40k narrative, and I decided to... Um, I, I, I've always wanted to do something with Space Marines, and this is, this is proving to be a one-of-a-kind project. Uh, this will also be my Armies on Parade entry for the global contest because it's a little bit more on brand. It uses more official scenery kits, not a lot of big scratch built conversions like my Age of Sigmar stuff. Gotcha. I'm going to try and hold it up to the phone. You can see it a little bit with the washed out colors and sure. like the dim light. Looks lamp. like a Dark Angel. Uh, he looks good. Yeah, it is. It, it is a, this is a Dark Angel. So, yeah, I'm working on. Some intercessors, a terminated chaplain, and um, the apothecary from the new Leviathan box set. Uh, the goal is to have them done by the end of the weekend, and then I'm going to get back to my Age of Sigmar display board for a GT at the end of July. Okay, you got it. So you got a lot teed up, a lot going on. Yes, I do. Love yes, it. I do. Oh, and I also have a historical bust I'm working on for Capital Palette, which is right up here. Very nice. Yeah. Right. So a lot. Tyler. What about you, buddy? What have you been working on? Yeah, so War Continues on Vault Wars. I actually have a little train set to show, or at least one piece of a train set. So I got this. Nice. If I can do this right. Yeah, yeah there we go. This is a cardboard terrain piece from Battle Systems. So I got a box, their Fantasy Village. I wanted to try it out. 
for, you know, see if it might be doable for some Vault Wars tables. I really like it. Like, it's it would be helpful if they had online instructions. You had to do some videos <laughs> to, to follow along. And they were they were a little fast for me. I mean, but if if a dummy like me can can figure it out, then almost anybody could figure it out. So I, it looks great. Goes together well. I got a few other pieces. There's uh, you know I'm hopeful that when you actually get a full table together, it'll it'll look cool. Yeah, and it's... it'll be functional. Sure. I've always liked that stuff. The problem with it is it's because it's cardboard. It's way easier to damage. And you so, have to be like, careful. You have to be yeah. careful. With it. Yeah, you can't just like throw it in a tub. And stack exactly. it up or something, and it's just like, oh, whatever happens is fine, you know. Like, no, it's the some weight will crush that thing flat. So yeah, you got to be, gotta yeah. be a little more wary. Um, yeah, I, I I stumbled on them a while back as battle systems, and just hadn't heard a whole lot about them in the community. I, of course, in the 40k realm, Tabletop Titans, they did some cardboard terrain. I think they've got a fantasy version as well. Uh, there's some other groups that are out there. There's names I'm forgetting, but yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, I was thinking like maybe major events only, just pull it out, make sure. a, a really nice table with it, and uh, probably sprinkle some pebbles and some rocks on that table, because all GT players love that stuff. Really, really fully immerse them in the experience. People love scattered terrain just being everywhere, all over the board. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. 100%. That's, that's really what I've been to about. events where that's a thing. Sure. They, they, use, they use cat litter to add to the sand on ruins. Like, Look, I'm, yeah, the, I'm fine with some amount of scatter. Yeah. In AOS, you can do it because we move our models individually and you can just kind of place around it and stuff like that. It's yeah. when, when you were playing a rank and flight game, it was like the, it was just the worst <laughs> because your whole stupid tray had to fit up on that thing. But uh, that's why one of a myriad number of reasons why I don't like rank and flight games uh, mm. because they don't really work well with terrain. Okay. Uh, don't at me. I don't care. Um, so the, my hobby time, uh, been split between two different projects. One is my like very simple, fun, fast project. And that is getting an army, uh, 40 K ready for, uh, for 10th basically. And so for that's Tau. So here's my little neon Tau. I've got three crisis suits done mm. and you can see there he's all, are we, are we going to play, a, are we going to play a game fence? Sure. If you want to play a game with me. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so I've got my, me. what do I have done? I have my crisis suits done and I have like my first test pathfinder done and you can kind of see him back there is the character guy. What's his name? Big armor guy. I don't know. Star something. Farsight. 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 There you go. Him. There you go. That's him. Yeah. The one, sure. the one with the sword. The one with the sword. Yeah. The big dude with the sword. And then I've got a big box of, um, uh, like I've got my combat patrol box for the other big robot, my ghost keel or whatever it is. And man, I'm just, I'm stoked. We're going to have a bunch of Tron Tau. So that's very exciting. Just working my way through those. Going to do some videos around that. So, so look for that stuff coming probably next month sometime. I don't know, whenever. And if I, if I may, sorry, go, go for keep it. going. No, no, go. I was about to say Tron Tau versus cyberpunk space Marines. I, I, I think that's like a match made in heaven. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm all like, it's all blue edge lines and pink uh interior lines so i uh i actually experimented with many different ways to get the to do the um lining like the interior lining in a fluorescent color mm -hmm. and yeah. uh i think i came to a really cool and interesting way to do it so you'll when you watch the video you'll find out it's a very specific sort of thing you don't have to mm -hmm. do very often but uh, uh when you do hey here's a good way to do it Nicholas R says, pro tip, don't play 80 Fire Warriors. Uh, don't worry, that would never be a thing I would do. Um, I got into Tau because I wanted to play with them big robots, man. I want to play with robots. Robots are cool. Dudes in mechs and battle suits and stuff. That sounds cool as. So uh, I'm going to have like 20 of the little Pathfinders or whatever just for, you know. I do, I do have one question about the upcoming video, but you could just always answer, well, go watch the video. Sure. Because uh, I, was, I was watching... Um, uh, JH miniatures. That's this one Hidalgo, and I think yep. he was doing a plasma glow thing. And he said the best way to do like an inner glow is to use like a white oil wash, and he just pin washes it at the bottom of the coils. So was about to say maybe you could do a pin wash with that bright color in the recesses. I I may look. Here's what I'll say. Watch the mm -hmm. video. I I there too am aware of how capillary action works. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been around this, uh, this, this block a few times. Uh, but the problem is they don't make fluorescent pink. 
oil. Ah. So you have to figure out how to navigate those waters, how to get it both bright and into fluorescent pink. Um, gotcha. So there you go. And Mogwai Man says Robot Jocks. Uh, Robot Jocks from the maker of Robot Wars. Absolutely. <laughs> um, that is a... Who is the name of the director who made Robot Jocks? This is going to kill me. Uh, gosh, this dude's like a really great 80s director who made a bunch of really silly stuff. I'm sorry my parents aren't here to like immediately know the answer to that question. Oh, well, I'm going to uh, they're, they're both Yeah, they're both some Stuart scholars. Stuart Gordon. It was Stuart Gordon. I could not let that go by. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Stuart Gordon, who made a bunch of very silly 80s things. All right. Anyways, uh, but that's the that's the fun project. Serious project is this girl right here I'm working on, uh, which is uh, from Mindworks. Uh, yeah, that's I, Night yeah, of I the Zombie. So. And yeah, that's uh, gonna be great. So very very excited about how this is coming along. Uh, some of the best skin I've ever done. I'm just only painting figures that have tons of exposed skin. That's it. Like I'm I am determined to up my skin game, like all the way. I wanted to I want to hit just. Like I want, I'm trying to max level this particular thing. This is this is a, a deliberate practice sort of thing. So yeah. Well, you did a you did a great job with Morgan, and I might be biased because that's the my version is is my best work so far. But I was looking at yours. I was hoping for more photos because uh, I just can't get enough looking at looking at your rendition of that. And that was great. Well, you'll get to see it in person in a few months. So there you go. Yep. Uh, and yes, Mogwai Man was right there with Stuart Gordon. All right. Um, so yeah, fun stuff. But like, and I like that. I like having a serious project that I sort of take my time on. I stare at her for a while and then slowly adjust things. And then I've got a just fun stuff I can just like paint, I'm just like ah, you know, work. And then as I'm looking, I can just be thinking about the more serious project. Two projects is the perfect number of projects, as we've said many times. All right. Speaking of that, let's talk about some hobby, gentlemen, shall we? Uh, let's move over to our main segment, which is getting your army painted. I've got some photos here, all mixed up of various photos that we've got. I'll just kind of scroll through it as the show goes on, and maybe we'll talk about it every so often. But what I want from you, uh, people watching, is what are your hobby questions? What are your hobby challenges? Uh, what are the things that you're, you find that stops you from painting? So I want to actually start this off, Tyler, by swinging over to you. Okay? Yeah. Tyler, up until basically this year, basically, you refused to paint. Steadfastly <laughs> refused to paint. 11 years going. Had, had quite a record going. Yeah. You did. You had everybody, myself included, offering to help you, give you advice, mm. to, to, to take you through anything you needed to know. And, uh, and yet, nothing. And then all of a sudden the dam broke, right? <laughs> yep. And you were painting up a storm. Okay. So here's my question. I got I got suckered into quid pro quo guilt uh, guilt trips. Apparently work yes. shame guilt trips. They they tend to work on me. Uh, my friend Bryce, he proposed that if he and others are going to paint terrain tables, an entire terrain table, the least I could do is paint one unit per terrain table. Sadly, that seemed very reasonable. So, here we are. Now... But deeper than that, you discovered you actually enjoyed it. I do actually enjoy painting. Uh, yeah. You have told me on numerous occasions it's a form of meditation. It's meditative, meditative practice. And that's quite true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's relaxing. Yeah. I dig it. Okay. Okay. Good. Marty, I'm going to swing over to you now, buddy. You've been on a journey yep. trying to up your painting game. Uh, we've got here, as you said, this is, as you, you you put in the chat what it was. Thank you. This is your your narrative Warcry Warband, the Deathless Clans, all converted yeah. and lots of fun stuff going on here, obviously. Many different Ooh, figures yeah. from different kits coming together. You did yep. enter this into competition as a unit entry as well uh, in various yeah. things. Yeah, and it finally won an award. Sure. So here's what I want to ask you. You've painted a couple armies now. Okay, and you've painted yes. them to a high quality. I, I don't think I would be mislabeling you to say that when you paint an army, you're trying to actually, like, paint something that's going to win Best Painted, or at least be in the run. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. That, that, would be, that would be accurate. 
Okay. So what motivated you to get on the improvement train? Like, like why? It takes a lot of work, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I always, I actually uh, keep a pinned tweet because a few people have asked me this question, um, especially in Goobertown Hobbies Discord, which is a great place to talk to people who from all across the spectrum of like applied effort. Some people are like, you know what, I want to paint one figure every three years or they want to get better at their figure painting, or there might even be people as skilled as like Ben Cantor, just casually post it, posting stuff that could like win a crystal brush and that they're working on in there. Mm -hmm. um, and the pin tweet has a photograph of every, like one model from each of my gaming armies from like when I was in college, uh, about like 2013 up to my finished Lumineth in 2021. And you can like see the improvement. Uh, it was one of those things where I would go to events and I would see people that really applied themselves, not just trying to showcase to judges that they are a master of technique, like I can do true metallic and non-metallic metal. I can express all different types of contrast and use of color theory. I could create a technically excellent display, but they're also applying the heart and imagination. Mm -hmm. And sure. instead of getting jealous, where it was like, uh, that, that makes me discouraged, or uh, man, that's, that's just too good for me, or that's just too much work. I was like, well, if I really appreciate that level of effort, and I want that for my own collection, not just for competitions, mm -hmm. I like um, putting my own artwork on display in my own home. Sure. And taking pride in uh, the imagination that went into that. And so I just decided that I just wanted to have cooler models that expressed like more of like like challenged my ability and helped me learn more as an artist along the way. And I think it's kind of gone from there. Um definitely since um I wanna say twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, uh with the help of both yourself, um, some coaches in the community and just meeting people who are of a far greater skill than I could have previously fathomed, it has been a great help. Uh, and you can see that also in the tweet where we go from all of the different flavors of Stormcast where I'm like showing some gradual improvement, and then once I've applied more saturation or weaponized color theory, as I like to say, to, to maximize impact um, in the composition to the audience, you can really see it take off. And um, I think that exemplifies best in both my Lumineth and my Mirror Universe-ish Slaves to Darkness that I took to Adepticon this year. Nice. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's hit the chat. Let's ask some questions. I'm going to jump forward here. Here's another picture mm -hmm. from, from Marty. These are all in random order. So I, th I think some of the early ones, Marty, are mostly you. So you can type in the chat if you want whatever this is. Uh, I'll leave that to uh, you, or you can talk about it yeah. as, as, as you see fit. Um, but I'm going to answer some questions here. So, okay. Uh, how do you not start 10 projects at once? I love it all. Uh, I don't, because I, I hate having multiple projects. They hang over you like the Sword of Damocles. Uh, mm. I, don't, I don't know. Like, I'm never a person who's... I, I am a bulldog-type person. I get on one thing. Working two projects for me is honestly pretty hard. Uh, so, But, like, I, I try to force myself to do it just so I don't burn out. Um, because what I want to do is grab one thing, work one thing, work that one thing until that one thing's done, set it to the side, then do the next thing. I am a single threaded type of individual, but I mean, like, if you know, you're not, if you know, you're somebody who wants to, you got to like that, that impulse control, right? Uh, walk away from the cookie. Um, you, you've got to, mm -hmm. you got to, you got to just sort of focus on that. How do you stay motivated putting all the time and effort to get an insane level of quality on baseline infantry guys? Marty, how do you that stay motivated from, to keep painting? Yeah. That was from Brian Pickford. Uh, yep. Congratulations for doing well at ACL. Um, I remember his army pretty well. I I judged about 45 of the, in the end, like 87 armies. So a little bit of them blend together, but I'm always happy to take feedback from people privately. Or, or, I'm sorry, accept feedback or give feedback. Sorry, tongue twisted there. Um the thing about infantry for me is that I always have a wild imagination while I'm painting my figures. And to me, even the infantry matter. Uh, I, I try, I don't want to say that every little infantry guy has a story, but they are furthering 
the story that you're trying to tell with the overall composition of your army. I love regular Space Marines. I think he was talking about the Infernus Marines in another question in the mm. chat. Um, and so I'm painting regular Intercessors right now. It's just a guy with a bolt rifle. And they don't really do very much because it's just a light machine gun, which is an anti-infantry weapon. And they do some bonus things on objectives where it's like, well, if they sit on an objective, they can actually do the sticky thing where they can tag it and then leave and not most stuff in 40k can't do that. But to me, all of the little details on them really express um, an extension of the story. And you can't... I, I feel like uh, the way that Games Workshop stru stru uh, structures their model kit ranges, the infantry, the, like the baseline little squibs, tell um, as much of a story as all of the big elite centerpiece kits. And hmm. it, gives, it gives me a little bit of... Um, Comfort isn't the right word, but I feel like I'm coloring in the whole story by working on even the lowest, lowest of infantry guys. Now, I think that does have its limit, because when I was adding at the last second, I painted the Unmade for my Slaves to Darkness Warband. I converted them, and I painted them in about three evenings. And you could tell, like, three evenings is still, like, a lot even for pushing anyone uh, to try and paint to a very high level in a short period of time. Uh, but I tried to make them as characterful as possible while just not um, spending too much time on maybe like the weathering on like some jerkin or fur boots, etc. Um, so to summarize my little bit of a ramble, uh, every unit, every model in your army, if you want to paint it well, every model matters. So it helps to maybe add a little bit of detail either to their base or to the infantry model itself, whether it's some weathering or like some extra stuff on their belt or maybe like a head swap here and there to really give them that extra bit of life that might not be in the stock kit. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice answer, Marty. It's very ephemeral. It's very soft. It's yeah. inspirational. I love it. Now I'm going to give you that Too real long. talk. Okay. <laughs> Here's the real talk for, for that. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you get if you're trying to paint to an insane quality? Well, are you are you capable of it? Ask yourself that question. Yeah. Are you capable of putting in what's the what's the count per model? Like my stormcast were twelve to twenty hours per model. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. My mirrored edge army. Time. Go for it. Yeah, my my mirrored edge army, which had I believe by the final list I took to Adepticon, <clears throat> around like forty three models. And that was about 25 hours, 20, between 22 and 25 hours a week for 10 weeks. Sure. That, that takes over your life. And that's exactly where I was going to go. Like, it's perfectly fair to ask yourself that question and go, okay, if this one model takes me five hours, if that's insane detail for me, right? And I got to do 50 of these models. Okay, well, 50 times five is 250 hours. How many hours do you paint in a week? Right? How mm -hmm. many hours, how many weeks is that? Are you then going to work on that? Are you going to be interested in doing that project that X amount of time? Like you can look at that in the beginning. And if the answer is no, if you know you're the type of person who's not going to sit there three months later and still be interested in this thing and be in, in drilling at this same thing, then don't. <laughs> Just don't. Mm -hmm. That's like also you, true. You, yeah. you don't need to, there's no requirement to do that. You don't need to paint anything, especially common troops to the to that level. Um, like if you're trying to win best painted at an event, then you've got to put in the time, right? But if you're not, if you're just trying to have a nice looking army, then cheat. Cheat is my answer. Like on yeah. the common core troops, cut corners, push contrast, pay attention to the areas that matter, bases, faces, weapons, shields, banners, and then, and then ignore everything else. Like keep I everything else remiss. super simple. Hmm. I would be remiss if I didn't add my adage, which I, I say to effectively everyone multiple times a day when I talk to them at events. It is your hobby. Enjoy it at your own pace. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes that pace is breakneck, but it doesn't have to be. Well, and that's my, my point is more endurance. Like you're, there's a certain amount of it. Like the real answer is you got to build up that endurance. It's not like it can be your first army. You're just like, well, I'm going to take 500 hours on this thing. And by the way, even if you did, it would still look like crap if it's really your first army. It's not going to look good because you just don't have the skill set to do that. Like, if I went out and just built a house, 
right now. <laughs> I could take all the time in the world. It would be a really crappy house you wouldn't want to live in. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how to build houses. Right? Yep. Like, there's a skill set to carpentry and being an electrician and bricklaying and all of that sort of thing that I don't have. Right? Mm. So, like, one, yes, always enjoy your hobby in the way you want. But two, don't ever feel the pressure like you've got to do that. And three, cheat like crazy. Like, when I'm judging armies, if I see core troops have some pretty simple mistakes and are, and are more simple, but then they put the time in on the centerpieces and stuff like that, I don't judge that very negatively. Like, if somebody's done a high quality across everything, then that's going to beat it. But I don't mark people down for, like, you know, skipping some steps when there's, like, 80 dudes in a unit. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, of course <laughs> you did. Who? What sane person wouldn't? Life is a... Time is your most valuable resource. You never get it back. All right, so there you go. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I wonder, Tyler, I want to ask you this question because I wonder how much does this matter? Jacob mm. says, how do you finish a project you started when nobody around you wants to play the game? So you've had a pretty healthy scene for AOS for a while, right? Yeah. You, you got a yeah. lot of people. So that's never mm. been an issue for, for you. But here's my right. question. You had everybody else pressuring you to paint, right? Around you in, in your scene. Okay. Yeah. Do you think you would have still painted if no one around you was, if no one, like, you're still playing AOS. You're still doing this show. You're still going to tournaments, whatever, maybe, right? Barely. Yeah. But if you didn't have that <laughs> regular club, do you yeah. think you would, you would still have been as motivated to get into and paint? I uh, highly doubt it. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I haven't done a commission in a while uh, either, which, because I mean, that's a big investment. And sure. I just haven't felt. That that was a sound use of yeah of of my my money at this point in time, uh, but yeah no a short answer I don't think so. Yeah, I mean at all. I think that's fair. My honest answer is it's really hard to paint a game pieces like game pieces for a game you don't think you're gonna play. Yeah. Honest yeah. answer, unless you paint or unless you're doing like two armies, so you can show a friend or like take a friend through it or like start a local scene. They're like, hey, do you want yeah. to play this game? I've got both forces. You can just play this one or play the one you like. Mm -hmm. right. May I offer a, um, an anecdote to that? Go for it. While you're doing um, it, advance the slideshow. All right. It'll be another one um, of Hey. Uh, so originally uh, in the 2015 to 2016 era of Age of Sigmar, um, I was one of the only people in like the South Jersey region who like adopted it. Uh, mm. people despised it uh, it's like why did fantasy replace this yada yada or people were playing war machine or magic or whatever uh but i was paying attention closely to the growing age of sigmar global community on facebook and one of the first events that looked interesting to me was uh the very first holy wars yeah. and so um in, i said to myself if that's what my hobby is going to be um if i can't play this locally I can uh, budget my time, my money, and my army projects around the, the events I know I'm going to attend. And so I took a big step. I flew across the country to a place I've never been. I met a bunch of new people, which is how I came to be friends of the show, because I met Vince, Tom, um, and a lot of the Midwest Adepticon sort of crew there. Mm -hmm. And that's basically where I started my hobby journey in Age of Sigmar, really. Even though I was starting it from the beginning, I, I found a goal, even if it's a little bit longer term. Can't play it at home, but I can play it at this one event or something like that. And that grew and grew, and now it's a big game, a little scene, stuff like that. So it, it helps to find a goal, which can create motivation for you. I like that. That's great. Yeah. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. uh, Prussian Warfare said, my question, how do you go about fixing brush mistakes on places you airbrushed, I find myself using the color I airbrushed with the brush being different tint than the airbrush color. Yeah, they always will be, mainly because of how colors are mixing. The answer is you just got to remix a matching color on your palette, like figure out what's different about it, like lighten it up slightly, darken it up slightly, play with it, and then re-airbrush it. Like you, the key is repaint it. I mean, like I know that sounds like I'm being incredibly pedantic, but like it will happen. It just will. And in the areas you just kind of like at a, at a small micro scale, you don't need to have the exact color. It just needs to be close. And then you just keep working up and down until you get it into the range. So it's just a matter of you keep painting that area a little bit of this color. No, it needs to be a little darker, a little lighter, a little more yellow, a little more green. 
Like it happens all the time, and and you just you just keep working it back and forth. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Somewhere in here was did I miss a question? Oh, there you go. How do you get started again after a long period of inaction? Break the dam the second time. Well, Nicholas R, I've got a simple answer for you, buddy. Uh, I really do. You do it. Uh, <laughs> you just do it. What yeah. you, it can be, we can we can go Jordan. We can go. Uh, uh, what's his name? I know he's in the woods and he's gonna kill you. Shia LaBeouf. There we go. Just do it. I, I was gonna. I had to get there. I think about. I had to think of the whole song in my head. Mm-hmm. Oh no, your legs caught in a bear trap. So, um, mm-hmm. the, like, I mean, I know that again. It sounds like a, a silly answer, but like. There is no other thing to do. There's no watch videos, learn anything. There's nothing that. You get paints and brushes and a cup of water and a model and you put those four things together in the fun alchemy that is our hobby. Like, you just sit down and do it. And you won't be... You potentially, you lost some of your skill. Uh, is it true that if you don't use it, you uh, lose it? Is that a real question? I mean, like, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe you, you, you lost a little, but who cares? You'll, you'll skill back up quick enough. Um, but like you're, you're never going to scale up. You're never going to do anything if you don't actually get into it. And, and you don't need to worry about like, but what paint should I buy? Any, some, what brushes? Yep. Just a brush, a thing that is made of a stick with a little metal band around it that has little tiny hairs on the end. Right. <laughs> what model should you paint? Whatever you want, man. Grab anything. Go nuts. Like, again, the point's not to, to have, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good in that situation just do it like it's and then you will figure out what you like and don't like as you get back into it and get going tyler yeah. you, you like you had to break I, the dam so yeah because um, my i have this like take the getting into aos in 2015 first thing i did getting into aos 2015 i created an age of sigmar directory because that's my approach to things. I like to try to get a comprehensive understanding sure. of an ecosystem, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, You're I've been trying to. I get it. That's I'm fine. a massive nerd. When I, you know, learning about uh, macroeconomics, so I need to create a directory on macroeconomics and all sure. of these different areas and get a comprehensive understanding of what's the state of the arts and so. Doing that, trying to do that with painting is. Uh, I've been finding that rather impossible as an idea and probably a, a waste of time as a starting point <laughs> so i had to quickly get over that and it's just been muddling through ever since with the help of bryce and linus and other friends locally uh, especially linus of late to help with number one so yeah and, and like this next project which i'm sure we'll talk about a little bit like would like to get a little bit better but it's going to be probably another process of muddling through asking marty and you and others questions getting under what paints and a few techniques like highlighting is a thing apparently how do i do highlighting decently uh, i think you just had a video on that effect i did as a matter <laughs> so, of fact yeah yeah but Obviously, anyway yeah you, you just... just watch my video duh <laughs> clearly uh so yeah i haven't watched it yet uh, i refer truth. people to, uh, to your videos from like seven years ago I, this is still yeah, good I... advice well, I appreciate it. Good advice. Not much good camera or audio, but but the advice I stand behind. So that's fine. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, Brickfrog, once you've gotten started on an old project, uh, how do you handle the dust and stuff accumulated on it? How much do super painters like you guys worry about bits of hair stuck in paint? I mean, I have three golden retriever long-haired dogs. It's sort of an inevitability. But if it's like a competition model, I worry about it and try to make sure it's not happening. Um, if it's anything else, who gives a hot pile of crap like whatever man it's life you know like that's just going to occur um as far as like dust i mean i keep if i i I don't have old projects because i finish everything i work on in a relatively short period of time but yes marty's exactly right keep a big giant soft brush like a big giant soft makeup brush around Mm -hmm. um that you like one for doing blush is really the right one like uh i'll show you the one i use here there's that here it is it's this the dog right. actually chewed it. You can see this. So, Marty, check this. See that right there? See the the yeah. feral? Yeah. The dog yeah. had chewed this, and and so my wife was just like, "Why well, can't use this? Can you use it?" And this is like the softest thing because it was meant for doing like, you know, uh-huh. blush, right? It's yeah. just supposed to be like real light applicator. So these hairs are like super soft and nice. It's just the perfect dusting brush because you can go over it and not hurt anything. So I just keep this around. If something, if for some reason I need to dust something, grab it, 
Jubu 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 ju. Give him a nice mm. little dusty dust. And I'll give that a I have a two step. Go. I have a two step rule for dusting. Uh, one, right before you paint, uh, and two, right before you take it to an event, if it's a competition model, because sure. you're mm -hmm. you're gonna see stuff on your way to taking it to the cabinet. You're gonna be like, I can't touch it with my thumb. I I need something, and just it just helps to 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 do that before you put it in the the, the case to get in the car. Yep. Yep. Hey, Rocco, good to see you. I just wanted to mention, Rocco, I'm enjoying your Things That Scare X players. So he's been doing this series of like the latest one, Things That Scare Sivnath players. Good videos. Very nice. Uh, he had Brendan on talking about Soul Blight. Yeah, I'm really enjoying your series, man. That's fantastic. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, Brian Pickford said, how do you paint cast shadows? Uh, you watch Eric Swinson and or, and or learn from him. That's I think the the master of current cast shadows as near as I can tell. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a it's a you. I'll, I'll I'll actually give you the real answer. The real answer okay. of how you paste can't paint cast shadows is you take a light like this, like your painting light. You hold it up to your model like that, real close, okay. And you take a picture of it under that light and see where are the shadows being cast by this thing in that light. Uh -huh. Then Clever. you paint that, but you have to over accentuate it and kind of fuzz the like you're going to go darker because it won't generally show as dark when you're that close. And mm. you um, you can also just use like a small flashlight. I don't know if I have one around. Yeah, here we go. Like yeah. um, like if you have a little flashlight like this, like I keep one around just in case the lights go out down here. Right. Mm. So I can get to my electrical box. It's back here off the camera. <laughs> Um, you can just like take a small flashlight and point it near him like that, and that'll give you real strong cast shadows, right? Um, if, I'm, if I may shout out uh, T.J. Marsh, have you spoken to him at all, Vince from Journeyman? Um, no. Uh, and, but anyway, he was he was at Adepticon. He's like the other guy at the um. He painted all of the dragons for Kaurudik. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, talking to him has just been such an enlightening thing on shadows. And texture, because he doesn't like blending. He's, he's like, well, if I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to bother. So all of his, um, what look like blends are actually just like individual like texture hashes and su and such sure, like that. Sure, sure, of course. And he and he is this this big thing about how to paint shadows and bounce lights and stuff like that. Um, it's it's. I think it, you you also said it. Everything's either a cylinder or a sphere. Uh, and once you think about things or that right way and how cylinder. Yeah, oh, rectangle. Yeah, okay. Um, it it becomes a little bit easier to conceptualize how shadows work. Sure. Because but they're then gonna I cast their gen generic yeah. shapes. Yeah, I then, in general, have a rule for people who ask me that question: don't do it on gaming miniatures. Yeah, it's it it it's meant to be more of a display thing because where there's a solid viewing yeah. angle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here we go. We'll jump to another of Marty's photos here. Uh, while we move to some more questions. Uh, Jonathan Charles said, when I got back into Warhammer with my friend, I swore I wouldn't get into Seraphon until they updated Source. So now I'm working on my passion project of Seraphon, pushing some highlights. That's awesome, man. That's cool. That's very good. Uh, okay, for Gom. What, what do you guys, what do you guys think about Seraphon? Okay, so. <laughs> As a hobby I, project? I feel like, yeah. I, I love had... Seraphon as a hobby project. Okay. I, I, I may have played Seraphon yesterday. And there, I, there were there were skinks yeah. on the table as well. Uh, I survived the ex I survived the experience, but that that army is Tyler, like. Tyler, what have I told you about staring into the abyss? Okay. <laughs> Indeed. So that I love actually where coalesced. Uh, who who the hell knows in a, you know, in the coming weeks, right? Where they're going to be? But I love where they're at the moment because they're in that challenging spot. Yeah, like sure. coalesced. No one is going going to accuse Coles of being overpowered right now, and I love sure. that about them. It's uh, it's right. Is this a match play list. discussion during a hobby show? Yeah. The point being, that I find them fascinating. But yeah, I'm curious, like from a painting standpoint, how how attractive would, do you think they would be for somebody like me or or other newbies, relative newbies? I think they're a perfect army for for yeah. relatively new painters. Like I really do. I think they're wonderful yeah. as a starter army. Um, yeah, Seraphon are possibly one of the easiest armies to paint, in my opinion. Even mm. with like the new over designed, lots of detailed centerpiece stuff. Yeah, because like the the big the big frogs in the middle are tough and they have a lot of crap on them. But it's still just like crap you can contrast, like vines and sticks and stuff like that with texture. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the, like, Seraphon themselves with, like, scales, they have a lot of roughness to them. They're very natural creatures. They're very unit, they're very unimaterial. Like, that is to say, they're all one organic thing. They're not, like, wearing a yeah. lot of different crap. Like, Marty's pictures here are great examples of people with a lot of crap on them. Look at all this yes. crap on this guy. So much yes. crap. Uh, I should have put a space brain in there because they don't have a lot of crap on them. Just mm. the base one. Yeah, sure, sure. And so, no, I think they're great. And and here's what I'll say. Like, if you, if you look at my armies, you could divide them very neatly into two types of projects. So yeah. I have armies that I've gone, like, all the way on. And those take months and months, right? Mm. And then you have armies I painted in less than a week, right? Mm -hmm. Often in something like 24 to 48 hours. And Seraphon falls into the latter category, right? So all of those armies that fall into that latter category are the super friendly, like, beginner armies. This is where John yeah. screwed up with his paint army in a weekend project. He tried to do, like, Night Lord Chaos Space Marines. You out of your mind? Oh, yeah. That, that video. <laughs> that's, just, that's just, he and didn't how, think that through. Okay. And he had, like, how many Pox Walkers or something like that? And it's like, <laughs> Well, I mean, no. you know, the... the, the that little the the Heldrake alone, the 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 chaos mm -hmm. chicken alone. That's 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 a whole project yeah. for a weekend. But like FEC, Seraphon, right? Uh certain flavors of of, of gits, especially like trolls, yeah. like an all Trogoth army. Maybe yeah. Maybe Boy, Iron Jaws. Iron Jaws, Iron Nurgle. Yeah. Right? These are like yeah. all very new newbie friendly armies. Take well summoning is annoying things. sure but i mean like yeah, but, whatever yeah you're not you're not worried about summoning when you're just trying to get an army on the table right like whatever whatever sure. you got to eventually have a unit but like it's not, the, yeah. it's not the biggest deal right you can just be like i don't summon anything <laughs> right <laughs> sure. <It's>, okay <laughs> cool so like those but, are all very new friendly right. armies yeah i'm just noticing armies that are in that like 40 to 50 model range are very attractive in my mind. And Seraphon, the list I wrote was exactly 50 models on the nose. And a lot of Stormcast lists are like around 40 models. Love it. And yeah. No, I, I think that's dead on. Uh, for myself, uh, you know, it's like Seraphon was a very fun project. I, I had all those Seraphon for a while. I, a lot of mine are the mm. really old ones, but it was still a good chance to like mix of new and old kits and to paint them up. Um, I'm sure at some point I'll paint up the, the new frog just to have a new salon. He seems fun. So. Mm. Okay. I, I, I am the opposite because I like when they have a lot of crap on them because that just adds to the storytelling for me. Yeah, sure. Like, no, like, I'm, a, like, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a minimize the crap kind of guy. So, all right. Yeah. For Gum, I want to get better at marble. I've watched the hobby cheating video and just couldn't make it work. Any advice or tips or help? Sure. I'll, I'll give one, and then Marty, if you've got anything, uh, let's just throw in here. Uh, I mean, marble is just texture. It's really just stipples and slashes and lines. That's all it is. So, like, um, that kind of, like, stippling stuff is just a good way to go about it. You just take different colors and, and literally jam a brush at it in a random pattern, and you'll get eventually to marble if it's got a satin finish, and it's in the sort of a certain color tone, like greens. It's all in different blues or blue-greens, and or it's all in white and white-browns and white-brown-blacks and stuff like that. But as well, if you want the cheat, you can always use the dryer sheet method. Um, you take like a, a dryer sheet. you So you airbrush an area. You airbrush the thing. White. And you take a dryer sheet and you kind of pull it apart. And then you airbrush over top. Like with the dryer sheet as a filter, you airbrush gray. And that'll create this really weird liney pattern that looks mm -hmm. like marble. And then you pull another one apart less. So it's less, so less paint gets through. And then you do black. Ta-da! like marble it, it'll look like some of the most convincing marble you've ever seen in your life and it's just literally you taking a dryer sheet and like stretching it and pulling it apart that's all that's that'd be like the super cheat marty anything i missed on the marble you want to add in um i put in the youtube chat i just linked to herner's video on marble because i just i liked his two even though it's a three yeah it, it'll kill it the link out for you but that's fine i'll, I'll... okay Yes, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It's 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 just from Steve Herner's YouTube channel. Uh, he has two different ways to paint marble, uh, which he did for one of the holy tables. I, yep. Yes. I know it has a name. They they all have names, but they all um, have names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a whole uh, marble. Yes, he did multiple whole marble tables. Yeah. Yeah, and it was to match not only like the flavor of his uh, Doomcast Eternals, uh, but also it looks great in general. 
Marble is not something I tend to paint. I tend to favor textures which are either too like like rustic and naturalistic um, or steer hard into like the sci-fi thing. Like so it's just not something I tend to paint on models. However, I have seen other people do great tutorials on them. The best one I've seen that just immediately came to mind was by Steve Herner. Uh, check mm. it out. It's his YouTube channel is Holy Hammer Hobbies, and he is Holy Hammer Hearn on Twitter. Nice. All right, yeah. here we go. Uh, Doctor Clownicus, when you start a new army, do you start with the most basic infantry and get to the centerpiece figures after them? I know what I feel. Here's what I'm gonna ask, Tyler. You started your first army. What? How did you mm. start it? What did you start with? What order did you go? <laughs> Flag bearers. Oh, okay. actually, I think it was Nurg Nurglings, Flag bearers then plague drones and i got help with the most complicated ones i i still haven't done a truly centerpiece like great and clean one black kings supply lords my friend linus helped me with those just to get finished in time so i still need to actually do something a little more complicated but yeah we're gonna we're gonna get you on a centerpiece i'm like we're gonna get you a great one and get you working <laughs> I, I want to get a big thing in front of you it's all the same stuff man. Yeah. it's just more surface area just think of it like a bunch of little tiny minis squished together into one mini same thing yeah yeah all right, Marty, what's, board. Your, what's your tactic? Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be much help here uh, because when I start a new project, if I'm starting it from scratch, it's a very large undertaking, and I have to figure out how the colors are going to look on one basic model first. Um, I tend to wait a little bit on the centerpieces because the centerpieces may have their own color scheme or their own take on the ideas that I'm bringing to a Warhammer project, like a good example being my Teclas. I didn't paint Teclas until I was about uh, like 10 or so months into painting Lumineth. Mm -hmm. uh, the Slaves to Darkness don't really have a centerpiece right now. I'm still thinking about how I want to do Archeon or a Manticore Lord. Yeah, I was going to say, Archeon um, and Bellicor yeah. would like to speak to you about this such yeah, slander you're putting exactly. here. Exactly, yeah. Um, I think I have an idea for Bellacor, but that that's 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 going to be a tremendous undertaking. I'm only going to do that mm -hmm. if he becomes the meta pick, and I want to bring it to like something like Adepticon or LVO, uh, because that that will require a very large kit bash of expensive models and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So Past history my... says Bellacor is always the meta pick, my friend. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. history is on your side. And, yeah, 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 yeah. So in my opinion, you should start with like a single model to figure out if you like the colors or not, because those are the colors you're going to be working on for a lot of troops and stuff for a long time, if you want to put a lot of time and effort into the project. Even if you're only putting a little bit of effort in, start with a unit, get to f get into the flow of like, well, I want to do the, like, just say for like chaos, it's like, I want to do the black armor, I want to do the leather boots, I want to do the cape, the fur, the metals, the base, and then I'm done. And if that takes mm. like maybe two or three hours per guy, if that might be less. Um, and once you get into the rhythm, I, w I would say like, don't leave the centerpiece for last, like try and put it around halfway through the project so that you can come, you, you, you don't have to stress about leaving it for the end and you have stuff to look forward to, which is a little easier after you've spent a lot of time on a bigger, noisier model. Yeah, I mean, my answer is I use a very simple system. It served me well over 20-plus armies, and that is the reward system. You always start with, you figure out, you do a couple of base units, if you're using a 5, units of 10, whatever, you reward yourself with a single model. Then you do a couple more 5 or 10s, then you reward yourself with a single model. Then you do a couple more mm -hmm. units, like multi multi-figure units, then you reward yourself with a big model, and you've got an army. Save the coolest thing you're most excited about until last, because once you paint that thing, you'll be done. That's it. And there you go. So, like, in the case of, say, like, Tyler's Nurgle army, I would have done, like, okay, here's my Plague Bearers and five Blight Kings, and then I'll do, like, a Lord of Blights or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll paint the unit of Plague Drones and maybe ten more Blight or Plague, bear plague Bearers, and then I'll do, like, a Sloppity Bile Piper, right? Or whatever, yeah. and then, and so yeah. on. And I'll just keep alternating like that, right? Because those, those single figures end up just being fun palette cleansers where you can really spend the time and focus in, and you know, like, this one guy is it. That's it. I'm done with him. I'm done with oh. the unit. I was thinking about like if I paint ten Vigilors, I'll reward myself by getting Bash and Carthlos commissioned. Does that count? That counts, right? As long as you're painting it. As long as you're like not 
Not the commission. No, no, thing. commission. I mean, as long as yeah, you're paying yeah, yeah. the 10 vigilers, sure. Yeah, I get everyone, everyone I myself. Buy I'll, yourself I'll, ice I'll cream, it. do whatever, whatever your reward system is, man. <laughs> I don't care. Like, yeah, you spend your money how you want, dude. I'm not here to judge you. Yeah, I Excellent. think that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Keith, this is a very specific question that I have no idea how to answer. But I, but I, but I, but I think it's a worthwhile thing, which is I want to paint my plastic Horus Heresy Marines as old school rogue trader salamanders lava camo. How does one stay sane painting that many squiggly black lines? What, Marty? Do you know what this is referencing? What is rogue trader what? salamander lava camo? Um, the only thing I can think of is at the bottom of the I'm salamanders. Yeah, the only thing I can think of that it might be referencing is at the bottom of most salamander armor, and they ha not only do they have the lime green, but like at the bottom of their their armor plates, there tend to be like little bits of detail which look like smoldering calderas and like the like the 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 mouth of a volcano, and maybe they're covered in more of that. Um, and... It looks like they're yellow with sort of weird squiggly black lines on them. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Well, oh my god. Okay, I found the color scheme. All right, I found the actual, like, color plate. All right, okay. so two things, Keith. One, do not paint your models to look like this. Holy crap on a cracker. <laughs> that is one of the ugliest color schemes I have ever seen in my life. That is hideous and should be left in the ash bin of history. That is woof. Uh, I mean, like, it looks like they look like bumblebees, like drunk bumblebees. I I really wonder what drugs were being done when these original color plates were designed. Okay. <laughs> now, that being said, that's not even that many black squiggly lines, dude. There's like there's big thick black lines across the guy. Yeah, I mean like the answer is just build up. Like that's just that's a simple black line across the thing. I don't know. Like that's not it's a pretty straightforward color scheme on 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 him. If you want to be like yeah, really... oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I've oh yeah, that's that's interesting. That's that's definitely a thing. That's a word. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, really, it's not, that's not, you know, doing, like, micro detail or something like that. So the answer is, you know, do one, see how you feel, figure out how you get your steps. Like, smooth flowing paint, and you're good to go. You just start, you want a bit to make it so you can just trace the line smoothly around the piece. That's the answer. The less going back to your, your palette and stuff like that, it's going to be a better experience. Okay. Uh, let's see... Uh, Warp Fiend Studios just finished my first full AOS army, Iron Jaws. You've chosen wisely. I think Tyler and mm -hmm. I would agree with you there. And I found it a bit painful experience. If you have to speed paint an army, how do you deal with burnout afterwards? Yeah, sure. I mean, every time I do like a 24-hour or a paint an army in a week video or something like that, I'm exhausted afterwards. And the answer is you do exactly what I just said. You alternate over to something that doesn't matter. Paint a single figure from some other random army uh you know work on a display project work on something at a different scale or a bust like work on just some hero or something where you take your time do an experiment with a new type of product like oh i'm gonna mess with this new type of paint or new thing like give yourself a different goal right mm -hmm. shift gears completely out of army painting into something else that would be my advice so yeah vince to ask you a random question so Hit did you me. see that Stormcast photo I sent you. I did. With, We're gonna uh, talk about that. Listening. I'm just waiting okay, on the right well, question can, to get. Can... Don't worry. Well, I've, I've got yeah, it queued up, my boy, my dog. I've I wanted to, yeah. So I wanted to ask you about metallics and yeah. Okay, if you had particular recommendations as far as metallic paints and and all of that. All right, Everything please. I know about metallics I get from Vince. So you, right. you come. I, I to have the right opinions. Place. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, all right. So. Jim Crimmin says, I'm a dad who paints at night when the family's asleep. I'm also kind of slow. Painting a full army to my best would take six months. That seems like a mountain to climb. Can you accept a lower quality for the enthusiasm trade-off? Yeah, sure. I, mean, I don't paint to my best ability all the time. I couldn't. It'd be impossible. I'd never finish anything. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. I just mean, like, obviously I can spend a lot of time on things. Like, I've built up a reservoir of knowledge that I know how to paint to a fairly high level, right? Nobody mm -hmm. paints to their highest level all the time. That's just that's just reality. You can't. Once you like this, your skill doesn't have to peak up very high to where that suddenly becomes impossible. If you ever want to actually get anything painted, and the answer is yeah, you always like you. The key isn't painting less equally. It's painting less what doesn't matter. Like I really mm -hmm. want to emphasize this. 
And Ninas has mentioned this in a few videos recently, Ninjon. And I, I think he's, he's mm -hmm. like, I've talked about this for a long time, and I completely agree with this point. I mentioned it offhand earlier. You don't need to invest a ton of time into the whole model. Most people will never notice the, the a lot of stuff. You focus in on the areas that matter. Faces, details around the face. Like, what's the main thing? The armor? Make the armor look cool. Right? He's got a cool giant weapon. Make the giant weapon look cool. Give him a cool-looking mm -hmm. sword. Right? Have a cool-looking base. But, like, all the other stuff can just be basically phoning it in. His pants, his boots, his belts, his bags, all the B-words, his backpacks... <laughs> Hmm. All right, his butt, nothing. You just you like you know single layer, maybe a little 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 washy wash or some quick scratchy texture, and you call that a day, homie. You blow through that stuff. Who cares? Nobody's gonna notice if you put the effort into the things people actually look at. They'll be like, this army looks amazing, and you'll be like, he he he. I spent like a third of the time. That's the answer. So it's just figuring out what hmm. matters on the figures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I do have a side question. Well, uh, just to, to before we close on that. Yeah, go for it, man. Then how does then how does Margiotta do it? Uh, because he doesn't paint armies. He yeah, paints units. True. Like, that's just it. John is because John is a very methodical painter. Like he's one of the most mm -hmm. methodical painters I ever. It, so Marty's asking about blood is medium. John Margiotta, a great painter. But John isn't an army painter. John paints units. He's the best unit painter, yeah. I would argue, in the world. Okay? Mm. Yeah. But you can do that. You can be methodical and detailed when the end of your road is five models. Yeah, that's true. Right? It's still a project. It's still a project. But it's but it, it has a much shorter terminus like that, that the, the end of that is way easier to spot in the future than than doing that level on you know a hundred fish yeah. space marine army or something crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh let's see. And George Sutherland agreed. He said, "Realizing and accepting just because I can paint to a standard doesn't mean I have to." It's been a great stress reliever. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like again, I'll hold up the two things I'm working on: this and this. Right? Like, these are quick little fun paints that are, you know, just like nothing. This is w weeks of work, hundreds of hours, right? Very different. You know, you don't have to always keep one to the other. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? I jumped down. Uh, okay. Keith Rogers said, what I hear Ben saying right now is eat your vegetables first. Yes. Yes. Correct. Always eat your vegetables first. Uh, be a be a pleasure delayer. I promise you will be more successful in life in general. Uh, if you can if you can leave the cookie for five minutes, that's that's just it. Do not yeah. take the temptation <clears throat> dice. <clears throat> Never take the temptation yeah. dice. Okay. I'm sorry, Vince. You left the joke right there. Yeah. No, it's fine. Absolutely. Somebody was talking about stoicism in relation to the hobby recently. I can't remember who that was. Uh, obviously, we're talking probably about probably, well. probably probably Conti mentioned it. I imagine he's he's yeah. he's very yeah. That's vocal. what it was. Yeah, I Conti. Mean, yeah. Yes, he's like a 19 year old that just discovered that stoicism exists. So he's, <laughs> I, he's very into it. That's rude. Uh, it's no. Great. It's fine. Great video. Yeah, it was a good video, Paul. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> hey, hey! I watched it and I gave it a like. I always love when people talk philosophy. I appreciate him finding things. Just wait till he gets to the responses to the Stoics. Boy, that's going to be a real mm -hmm. mind blower for him. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I mean, like, my wife for our wedding gave me a framed picture with a quote from Epictetus. Epictetus, Epictetus however you say his name. I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't around in ancient Greece. I never met the guy um, <laughs> on it. So, I mean, that should tell you things. Nice. Uh, at any rate. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Some people still things. Let's talk about starting a new army. Okay. Uh, the, um, I want to, I want to, I want to, want to flip over to another picture I've got here. So let me, let me bring this up because let's talk about getting over that hump, the fear. So Tyler, I've brought up your picture. 
Oh, no. Okay. Now, explain to people what is on the screen right now. Let me actually get it on the screen with the delay. Sure. What, what are, are you showing? Of, these are a couple of Stormcast boys. Oh, uh, yeah. This question. Some, some, some... <laughs> These are some uh, Vigi lures or whatever. So. My my Dallas my Dallas Cowboys scheme that I like. Somebody pointed that out. This is the Dallas Cowboys. I thought that was incredibly rude. Uh, but I do love this color scheme. And I have no idea. If anybody knows who painted this color scheme, I have no idea where I found it. It was a while back. But I love this scheme. And so I would like to do this as my scheme for Stormcast as the next army. Now, I've heard whites are pain. I'm seeing some white inside there. Those cloaks. Maybe there's a, a cheat on that, light gray, maybe. Obviously, you've got high... Well, anyway, I could probably shut up. But yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay, this is, the, this is the scheme you want, right? <laughs> this is what I want, yeah. Okay. What is now, stopping you... Now, is this a scheme you... or is this a uh, Photoshop? Oh, I don't know. Could be... I have, I have no idea, doesn't Marty. Matter. Yeah. Okay. It, it doesn't matter. Irrelevant, either way. But... but... Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to ask the relevant question because I because I imagine you're living something that many people in the audience have felt, Tyler. They look out mm. there, they see a scheme, simple or complicated, anywhere in between, doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. And they think to themselves, "I want that, but I don't know how to do that." Right. Yeah. So what's stopping you from doing this? What's your what's your what's holding you back? Oh, uh, the new GHB and Battle Scroll to get the points to figure out what the list is going to be. That's number one. That's not exactly probably what you're looking for. The I don't think anything in particular is stopping me from getting started other than I need to figure out what my list is going to be and get the okay. models and, okay. and get started. Okay. So honestly, I mean, that's that's it. I, I was curious, like when I look at this, it feels doable to me as a next step or at least something approximating this. But I also feel like there's a lot going on here that I don't see. And I was curious to your guy, like the face of that gentleman. Uh, rocking the appropriate haircut. Like, how difficult is to achieve a face like that? Like, it looks quite cool to me, quite nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, your guys' overall sense of the quality of this, like, like this to me feels like it's it's very nice quality, but it seems achievable. Can I just add one quick thing before you start, Vince? Go for it, man. I, I want you to answer. I uh, want you to answer his question. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, so the first the first thing that I heard was you're waiting on what what the rules and points are going to be you know what your list is yeah. and i'm extrapolating from that is you don't want to lose any time painting a unit that's not going to make it to the tournament list is that correct yeah that but, right? absolutely marty yeah. and with it with the so. usual asterisk right that i'm not looking for a 5-0 list right i'm looking for my list my usual special yeah. snowflake list well, that yeah well you, you can look for the 5-0 list and in my opinion that the, in the in the doldrums or like the the null period between the the no knowledge and knowledge of what the the competitive meta or like the thing that you're going to bring is yeah. paint test models it doesn't yeah. matter if it, yeah, that's it's true. like just yeah. just find if you want to start new with stormcast it can be any stormcast though i recommend it have more textures rather than less so like it could be a vigilor, like just find an unpainted mm -hmm. vigilor, maybe at like this like the thrift game store or something like that. Just one that it's not part of like the box of ten or whatever. Mister Shu uh, sent me a bunch of sacrosanct stormcast a while yeah, back. Yeah, so they got they got they, they, yeah. yeah. So 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 take one of the sequiturs or one of the castigators, and yeah. figure out the scheme you're going to have, and okay. you can do it two or three times. You can even yeah. repaint it. It will just give you the idea that um, of like how you want to paint the armor, how you want to paint the cloth, the skin, etc. Because even if it's a little messy on the test model, you'll be able yeah. to hit the ground running once you have the tournament list in your head. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, these these are excuses. I could have gotten started by now and and should have because I think a lot of what I have that's in mind okay. for this, that's, that's this totally list, okay. like it's gonna have it's gonna have vindictors, vanquishers, vigilors. My friend Dan ran all the, a, all the V units. Important all the Vs yes. ran a Thunderstrike list. Yeah. I love the idea. I, somebody I'm forgetting the name. Maybe Jonathan Acri. I could be butchering that name at the Colorado. No, that no, I went you, back. That's right. Pure pure thir yeah, it, beautiful beautiful uh -huh. GW style Thunderstrike pure Thunderstrike army. I love the idea of like a Thunderstrike oriented list, and if it's if it's good, great. If it's not great, like, but I just I want that. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I played him at Kansas City. Gorgeous models. Oh, nice. We had a great game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. So yeah, right, but and, this and, is the this this game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you you're like looking for input on how to paint it. I uh, yeah. yeah. Like let's let's, let's tackle that ahead. separately. Here's what I'll say. <laughs> sure. oh, okay. I want to oh, okay. break down the fundaments of of a scheme and what you like the types of things you think about. I want to meta this for a moment, okay? Yes. Because I want to get yeah, into your talking. brain, to the brain of our audience. You're I'm looking at talking. this scheme and you're thinking to yourself, "I want to do that, but I don't know how to get there or how complicated it is." Okay. Okay. Here's question one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every time, there's there's questions that get asked fall into two basic things. Okay. I get mm. asked questions, and it's, how can I paint something like this? And it comes into two different answers. One answer is, you watch this video, here's how I've explained the technique, or here's how you do the technique, or something like that, right? It's a very achievable technique. It's just some mm. application of the base way that we layer and glaze and paint in, in general, and, and or stipple or, or whatever, okay? It's just like some mm. application of basic acrylic paint. Most things will fall into this category. That's things like, well, how do I get a cool looking blue color like that? Or how do I get a good looking, like slight blue tinted metal, right? Or how do I get a yellow yeah. that's actually vibrant or whatever, right? Those are the kind of questions that all fall into that thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because that's just you. That's just, that's just a technical hurdle of understanding, right? That you mm. got to get over. Like if you're, if you're missing some, some basic piece of, of knowledge, we got to slot in. Hmm. And then there's a second category of questions that my answer is, you don't. Okay, like, how do I paint something like this? You don't. Like, right. and these are questions like, I want thing, the thing to look like it's made of obsidian. Nope, you do not. I promise you. Okay. Mm. Uh, or I want to do um, like an oil slick rainbow effect. Anytime you're trying to play, paint the extreme complexities of light, Ask yourself, is what I am trying to capture here, or is what I am asking about, something about the fundamental extreme complexities of how light operates at the very edges of, of physics? If the answer is yes, don't paint that thing. It is mm -hmm. like, I have, I have this video I'm going to make sometime called The Five Things You Should Never Try to Paint. Mm. Okay? And, and both of those will be on my list. But this one... So, like, what you want to look at is you look at that and say, okay, how many different, you know, radical color combinations or complicated techniques am I using here? You know, like, is there is there really complicated things going on that I can't uh, I can't reverse engineer? No, not really. There's a blue mm. part with some decent layering. There's a white gray part. Okay, cool. You know, the bow is made of and the, and the leathers are all just sort of dark brown. Got it. And then there's like a coppery gold color like a rich warm red infused gold okay mm -hmm. cool like that seems that seems breakdownable right mm -hmm. this feels like an eminently doable scheme the most challenging part of this scheme is going to be getting a nice smooth you know gray to near white right or and the the inside of the cloak the cloak right inside okay yeah and that's just really a matter of layering up. That's all it is. You know, starting with a nice mid-tone gray and then layering up some color. Nothing more to it than that, right? Priming in a good middle middle color or zenithal will set you on the right path. Mm. But the rest of this is really easy. It's nice. It's working with darker colors. Darker colors are pretty easy to work with. They're they're much more transparent. So like doing a nice zenithal and then laying down something like a deep blue color like that will get you in a good place right away. All right? Uh, and the metals are just the metals. It's just a matter of using good metallic paints and then and then applying some some reasonable, uh, easy shading and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that was my initial experience with some metallics when I was trying things out on Plague Bearers uh, with their banners and whatnot that was like surprised at how nice it looked by just a good metallic. And like I said, I was curious your guys' thoughts on what you think are some of the better metallics that are out there that you would Vallejo recommend metal for. Color. It's okay. almost as if Vince did a video reviewing every metallic paint. <laughs> yeah, multiple Excellent. times. Vallejo metal color. This one right here. If you can find the one that doesn't say new formula, then even better. But uh, this one. This. Vallejo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. That is the one. This is the way. Okay. <laughs> we do yeah. not. We do not use anything else. This is the way. And that's Green all you stuff, need. Green stuff world gold is decent. 
Uh, sure, for like their pigment stuff. The other, the only probably like I use yeah. all the time, but I wish I just didn't, I didn't have to because I don't like Green Stuff World because they're a bad company. But you yeah, know, here we are. Nobody else is making pigment right now, uh, or or good metals. So it's, it puts me in a real pickle. <laughs> what about these cloaks with uh, the? Uh, is that what you would characterize as edge highlighting or highlighting the the blue, the dark here, blue, like the lighter like blue the on the edges? Oh. No, it's just some simple layering. In fact, simple. you could get that yeah. effect with contrast if you use your airbrush pretty cleverly with when you're when you're zenithing, and then you just put a single dark blue contrast over it. You could you could get well, basically that effect. The the folds in the in the cloaks. So yeah, yeah. like the guy, yeah, with the the dark blue, the outer dark blue, mm -hmm. where it's got that white, that lighter lighter color there. Yeah, you're talking okay. about like here on this fold, yeah. like on his front on his front left leg, like the yes. folds coming down from the left leg. Yeah, so I'm saying, yeah. like, if you just zenithal that from above with white, okay, and then you contrast paint over the whole thing, so it's still darker in the recesses from your undershirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would okay. just leave yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the higher ones lighter up. That being said, you oh, could also achieve that with layering, or you could achieve that with glazing, or a hundred other techniques, yeah. right? It's, right? That's why I think this might be a paint over in Photoshop, because um, those blues look pretty desaturated, as if mm. someone, like, laid a filter over whatever the original blue might have been. Um, mm. and so I always say that saturation, like there, there's, there's five types of contrast. I'm always going to forget the fifth one off of the top of my head, but one of them is saturated versus desaturated colors. Silver in general is what? No, I agree. Go. I was just saying, okay. yes, I was, yeah. I was affirming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this silver in general, because it is effectively a metallic gray, unless you are really pushing all of like the shadows to have like um like the talisar blue contrast or or whatever like a bl a blue ink like um mm. almost like gray nights from 40k it looks pretty desaturated so i would rely upon the fabric even if it's a dark blue you can have a darker blue which is still saturated and the way that you do that is generally instead of using dark blue in your shadow colors you mm. walk um like next door on the color wheel you start looking at purples um, maybe uh, you change the highlight color instead of just doing like um, uh, 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 like a, a cloudy like uh, I'm sorry like a blue sky sort of thing, which is kind of mm. um, desaturated. Maybe push into like the teals for your edge highlights on those folds. Mm. Uh, it might look a little weird in a vacuum on the palette, but we as humans read color. It not only where where it is on the wheel but in relation to other colors next to it and so yeah. i think a dark blue if you played with saturation correctly would look a lot more visually interesting next to regular silver armor all right any comments Vince? no i, I agree that's fine i think okay. i think i think you could go this or 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 modify it as marty's saying i think it's fine either way um this yeah. is very blue infused the, the whole way around but yeah i think i think mm -hmm. it's just a matter of a good silver some slight glazing for the colors and, and going from there. Now you ask, like, how hard is it to paint a face like that? Oh, that's hard. Yeah. It's a good-looking face. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Right. I mean, painting a good face takes practice. The rest of this yeah. is actually extremely simple. Painting okay. a good face takes a lot of practice. It's a yeah. small, small area. It's a lot of detail. It, it takes practice. Cool. You can well, get it reasonably good-looking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I appreciate a little bit of time on this. I was just curious, oh, right? Because I, I, I have no real sense of like Oops, my sorry. calibration on these things, and it's, it's good to hear, yeah, some of your guys' perspective on, on it. Absolutely. So, all right. Cool. All right. Cool. I'll just flip over some new models. Let's go back over here and talk about other stuff. What, Marty? We're just looking at your ear. All right. Well, I asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 pl I'm plugging the, uh, the phone in. Oh, that's a smart move. Uh, AG, any tips on edge highlighting? Yes, I have a video coming soon. I also have an old video on it. Uh, I mean, like, the real key with edge highlighting is just getting your paint consistency correct and then just developing the light, the right light touch. Like, you know, it's it's just about... it's it, That is literally a practice thing because you need to get the exact... You need to get mixing your paint to the right consistency down and then you need to get down just how to touch the model mm -hmm. with the right lightness to just get that edge traced and that's just something mm -hmm. that comes with brush control and time but the, the the real answer is you do a lot of it you do a lot of edge highlighting and that makes you better at edge highlighting um now remember the, remember the hack let's say this is the edge this is the edge there you go okay but you painted the edge 
like this. In other words, you made it nice and fat. The key is come back in with your base color, whatever this is, and push against it until it gets thin. I have a video on this on how to cheat edge highlighting. But edge highlighting mm. is very easy to fix. Like if you if you fat finger it or get a fat edge, you just push back from the other direction with your main tone to thin it down. Okay. Uh, let's see. AOS Coach. What's up, Coach? With a question. How do you document schemes and mixes for projects you expand later? That's a good question. Marty, do you write anything down? Yes, you and I have talked about this many times. I was, I've been waiting for the video on to recipe or not to recipe. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know what my answer is. Yes, yes, and I am the opposite end of it. Um, I document everything. I've actually been finishing up um, on my lunch hours this past week uh, my recipes for the, for the whole Space Marine stuff. Every texture I might run into, um, and then I'm going to document a paint list, get new stuff. So it's about right now five pages broken down by texture um uh like green armor red cloth uh like white like uh, chapter symbols um metallic gold metallic silver bronze everything like that uh because i paint to a very high level on a lot of figures i want them to look consistent as if they're part of like a living world which requires me to uh make sure that all of them have their their textures painted in a consistent way. I don't keep a wet palette. Uh, I have a disposable one. I'm using a disposable one right now. Sure. Uh, I am just a lazy person who does not really like to keep stuff like that. Uh, I recommend people actually have permanent wet palettes because they seem to be very helpful tools. And just as a result of that, I keep large lists and I make them very detailed. They're easy to follow. I can come back to the army like a year and a half later and then keep going the same way uh, that I was when I was originally painting them because I have the lists and the mixtures and stuff like that there. So yes, I do. Is there a particular wet palette you guys recommend? Or, yes, the Exemplar I mean... wet palette from Game Envy, 100%. There you go. Okay. I am using right. a plate. I got a ShopRite, uh, some wax paper, and a paper towel. Also perfectly fine, by the way. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you're, if you're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Wet palette, like... Like the exemplar yeah. wet palette's the way to go. It's the thing you see in every video. I actually just switched to the newer, newer model. My wet palette's all clean now and stuff. It's so pretty and it's purple, my favorite color. Yeah. So thank you, Kit. I, Kit I know, who, I, and also, Kit is an awesome guy who runs that company. Like this is not a sponsor thing. I, I have no deal with them. It's just I genuinely like their not a sponsor, just genuinely like their product and would highly recommend it. And they're all good people. So yeah. thumbs up. And I and I just want to add, like I don't think I'm gimping myself. Like I'm perfectly capable of painting models too an award-winning standard with a disposable wet palette. I just, just, that's what I do. Mm. Yeah, my answer on this one is very simple. It is, I don't. Uh, beyond this, if I have a set of paints that I'm using for an army, uh, I will put them, I have a small little paint rack on my desk that I keep all the current paints that I'm using uh, for a project in. And then I take my phone and I take a picture of all of those paints. Like I just literally go click and take a picture of all those paints. And then I open that photo and I write orc paints or something like that mm -hmm. on them. <laughs> and then I save it in a folder called recipes. And it's not mm -hmm. really a recipe because it's not how I, how I used them or in what mix or anything like that. Because what is it? I've got a pocket full of G's and a wallet full of keys. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Uh, because it doesn't matter. Minor variance doesn't matter. You will always have minor variance. And uh, it's irrelevant. It is completely irrelevant. No one cares in the world. No one is looking at your army. No one is judging your army. No one. Literally no one. Only you can mm -hmm. stop forest fires or whatever. But like, uh, my army, I vary them all the time. Um, because it's interesting to, to create some minor variance. Uh, because, you know, that's the world. The world has minor variance in it. Um, mm. so yeah, I mean, like I, 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 I know the universe of paints I use and then beyond that, I just go by feel. Somebody said, uh, who, William, William Mitchell. Uh, yes, exactly. I'm not a baker. I'm a, I'm a chef, right? Like I'm not, I'm not over here doing science. Like this isn't, this isn't a chemical reaction. Okay. You're, I'm, I'm cooking. Mm -hmm. Like it's a little bit of this. My, my grandma never made her, her ragu exactly the same every Sunday. It was always amazing. Okay. Because she knew the right things to start with, and then she seasoned to taste as she went, right? 
So there you go. That's, Speaking that's my, of that's my, my chefs and cooking, second season of The Bear is out. If anybody hasn't seen that yet, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, season one was incredible, and it continues. So love that show. Just finished it the other day. Yeah, I've got to, uh, I got to check that out. I've heard lots of good things. I saw season two. Yeah. I was like, all right, I, I'll, I'll get into it. I like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, okay. I, I actually see um, just as a, just a quick final thing. I see uh, the color schemes and just like the thought I put into them as an extension of the storytelling that I put into my models, and so mm -hmm. I think that's probably why I like them being meticulous. And well, also fine. some of the. I want yeah. to be clear on my stance, okay? Because oh, yeah. Mike Cathcart said recipes are very helpful for us colorblind painters, which is also completely fair. Like I don't want to be ableist about it. Like if it's something that you find value in, do it. You can't hobby wrong, as I've said all the time. So, like, if you find value in that thing, then you should do it. You should create those recipe books. Okay? I don't. I am giving you the freedom, if you are a person who doesn't find value in it, to not do it. That's what I'm saying. Right? Mm. Like, it is not a, a quintessential part of the hobby. It is an optional part if you draw value from it that's what it is hopefully that makes sense yeah all right uh brick frog hey question any good alternatives to citadel typhus corrosion i love using this stuff with the tiny fine grit material perfect for dry brushing on top of it marty what would you recommend as an alternative to typhus corrosion because i've got a simple answer but i want to know what your thought is um there's usually a prod i'm biased because um uh, I'm on the MFCA committee with Miniature Figure Collectors of America, and the sponsor store is the largest distributor of Vallejo and AK products in the entirety of North America. So if you are looking for a Tyvus Corrosion product, uh, Vallejo or AK make a version of it. Um, it will not be in a tiny paint pot, though. It'll be like in a half a soda can size thing. So, uh, But you'll get a lot of value out of it. So while I can't think of a product... I know one exists because they make yeah, one for everything. Yeah, Vallejo, uh, um, Ammo by Meg, and all those kinds of people do make um, yeah. do make similar-ish products with that in it. That being said, there's an easy answer. Take a brown paint, oversaturate it with just some random brown pigment. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, That's it. That works. You can just add more pigment to your paints if you want them to be gritty. Uh, so gritty. Philadelphia will be over here being jealous of how gritty uh, that gritty is. So yeah, you can just you can just oversaturate it with pigment. Okay. Uh, let's see. What would be the most important skill to work on for the transition from game models to display busts or display painting in general? Uh, detail. It's larger scale, so you need to work more detail. Like just in your endurance muscle. Being able to push, 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 no farther than that. Like, if when you make the transition to doing display work, you should paint twice as long as you think you're supposed to and have twice as much detail and contrast and texture, and then you'll be halfway to where you actually should be. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I've got one. Yeah, go for it, man. I'm ready. So going back to the predilection to wanting to get a holistic understanding of a field of a space and how that's not reasonable, uh, that's not a good use of my time. I would like to make time to become better educated about some things in this space, right? So you have, what, 10,000 hours? How many hours of videos? Like you have an absurd number of videos, just yourself. Sure. The, YouTube is this cornucopia of videos and websites. It's overwhelming, right? So maybe it's a loaded question, but like if you're in my position and you're trying to figure out what are the next steps, but you don't have an enormous amount of time to sit down and watch YouTube videos all the time. Obviously painting is a good, a good time to, to watch some YouTube videos for, for some people. What would you recommend as like next steps in trying to get educated other than watch your videos? <laughs> but, oh. but even even with your videos, Obviously. there's got to be like certain, there's got to be certain ones that, you know, I still feel like I don't know hardly anything, uh, in terms of of what the hell I'm doing here in this space, and I don't have a ton of time, so but but I want to become yeah that, that that's at least how I tend to learn things right. It's just is by observing and anyway I'm rambling but no, yeah no you're not 
Okay, I've got an answer for you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here's my answer. Um, it doesn't tell me, by the way, how many act how much total time is in the hobby <laughs> cheating playlist. Sadly, I was I I had clicked over to it to see like if it would right. show me how much time, but it doesn't it doesn't actually show me how much time is in there. So yeah, I mean, unfortunate. Clearly, you you've hit your Malcolm Gladwell long long ago, but yes. yeah, whether whether you whether you've done that in the actual videos, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you a story, Tyler. You ready? Yeah. All right. When I was a young man, I wanted to learn how to how to uh, how to sword fight. Okay. Mm. And so I, I uh, had somebody who was my my coach, who uh, taught me like I was learning kendo and fencing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this was like full contact training. Okay. Uh, now we were using like not obviously metal weapons and stuff like that right but it's it's still full contact like you get hit you're gonna get hit it's gonna hurt that's the point mm -hmm. and there's a lot to learn when you're trying to learn how to wield a, a weapon okay yeah a lot there's a lot to that skill and uh as we were training i kept getting whacked in the head <laughs> okay yeah. because he was like you don't block high very well like you don't you're not you're not reacting you're, you're you're letting your wrist drop and you're not uh very effective at blocking high so mm. to teach me that he kept attacking high and then my wrist would uh would would I would you know was weak basically and i wouldn't block in time or i wouldn't hold the sword at the right angle and he was able to power through the the block and then bought me on the head which hurts yeah i mean again mm. it's not gonna like crack your skull but it's unpleasant to get whacked in the head with a practice sword right Sure. Uh, after about four times in one session of getting whapped in the head, the fifth time I I successfully blocked, and mm. after that I didn't have the same problem. Like we kept drilling it that night, and eventually I no longer had that issue. Okay. Right. And I tell that story to say that like when you screw something up, if it actually causes you pain, you will yeah. learn faster. And pain in right. our hobby is represented by looking at your model and not being happy with the result, right? That's getting yeah. wrapped in the head. Yeah. And the response to that is to do what I did that night, which was deliberate practice, mm. right? Now, this was just one particular motion of one particular block of one particular, you know, larger skill set, right? But, but the same mm. is true for miniature painting. There is no one next thing you can learn. Yeah. Certain skills are evergreen and, and always present. So things like brush control and blending and stuff like that and paint mixing, you know, but those will just come up as you're as you're working on other things. Right. So my advice is always pick a thing. I don't know what interests you. Like we looked yeah. at that Stormcast, right? And you, you asked mm. about both painting faces and doing the cloth. Right. Okay. Cool. If that's a kind of if that's in your vision, yeah. then let's pick one of those two things and do some deliberate practice. Get some models with some cloth on them, or some exposed faces, or both. Paint it to your best ability. Get some feedback. Figure out where you went wrong. Touch it up. Do it again. Fail. Mm -hmm. Do it again. Get whapped in the head again, and do right. it again. Right. <laughs> and you yeah. will you will get it. But that's the key. It doesn't matter which one's the next one to pick. Because by by picking any of those things you're interested in, I want to mm. learn to do better cloaks. I want to learn to do better faces. I want to learn to do better uh, uh, armor, right? Mm -hmm. or, or cooler looking weapons. Or learn how to paint fire. I don't care. Pick the yeah. thing you're interested in. By doing those, you'll actually be learning the real techniques. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that there's the most. I mean, the last note of this. We can get back to the other questions. But the no, like so much. At least in my career, in my life, I've been oriented around like the work that I do, coordination, everything. Like all. Uh, let's put it in the context of AOS, right? Like if I wanted to help somebody get better at Warhammer, I think there's a fair amount get better at AOS right now. There's a fair amount that they could learn. Now there's a question of learning it and practice and actually putting it into practice, right on the table. Sure. So you, ultimately, you have to be able to do that. But like, you can listen to some of our shows. You can go listen to uh, Darren and Owen uh, with what and Alex with what they're doing with uh, Miscast. Like, there's there's a lot of good resources that are out there that sure. I think can really help give people uh, 
tactics and strategy and list building, and then they can, they're better capable of then, like they, they've got some fundamentals to help them apply that in their, in their games, right? So I'm like wondering, well, what, what are, what's some of the equivalent of that within this space? Yeah, that, and the that fundamentals can help me speed for this up, space are that bit. like brush control, mixing paints, controlling your paint thinness, stuff like that, right? Okay. But those okay. are just things you, you naturally work on yeah. as you're trying, as you're driving toward a particular outcome of something else, right? And working on better, better uh, replicating that blue, you're going to work on color mixing, you're going to work on proper paint thinning, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll do it again and again and again. To paint a face, you've got to, you've got to get better at brush control. You've got to get better at mixing the paint to the consistency you want, stuff like that, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's like you will those become part and parcel of the practice you're doing to, towards your other goals. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I want to, I want to knock out a couple quick questions here. HUD yeah. said, Hey y'all Vince, uh, you should be getting some stickers in the mail in about two weeks. I'm um, cool. I'm excited. I'm looking to get into AOS, but I'm looking at cities for my first army. Any advice on how to, how to approach this? Yes. Wait like two months or whatever, until the Cities of Sigmar book comes out. Hopefully you're still watching, HUD. And then buy those new models and go. Like, it'll be a new Cities book and a whole theoretically new army, probably. So, uh, that. Uh, Dr. Rocket, how do you make colored painted armor feel like metal without using metal? Yeah, it's You do colored non-metallic metal. That's the short answer. So look at my mm -hmm. Stormcast. Uh, I don't know where. There's a Stormcast in this photo. He'll come up eventually, one of my Ratcast. But um, right now we're looking at some of Marty's Stormcast, some of his older Stormcast. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, but that's, I have some videos in the, on the channel on colored non-metallic metal, so you can go check those out. Um, but that's really the answer. Um, you're, you have to combine the principles of non-metallic metal with a color. It's a fairly high level painting technique. Um, so it's tough. Okay, let's see. Let's scroll down here. All right. Uh, okay. Yep. Deliberate practice. There you go. Okay. Uh, Keith Rogers said, have someone whack me on the head with a practice sword when I make a painting mistake. Got it. Yep. Perfect. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I'm saying. You nailed it. Uh, and, uh, the die is cast. It seems like a sparring partner is the best way to learn to paint then. Yes. No, actually mm -hmm. that's, it was probably, I don't know if you meant that in jest, but it a hundred percent is correct yeah like yeah. um the like having someone you're regularly working with getting feedback from like when you work out and try to get better having a uh partner who's there spotting you is really important and it's the same for almost any sort of sport that you're trying to improve having a coach having a uh, spotter yeah. having a somebody like that and it's true for painting too like having somebody who can be there to give you honest outside third-party critique is absolutely critically important Marty, I mean, that's been a huge part of your journey, right? Yeah, shout out to Aaron Lovejoy, friend of the show. Mm. There you go, absolutely. Um, Great dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I took a class with him once at LVO in 2017. Became fast friends with him and the whole miniature monthly crew. I'm possibly one of the only people who owns all of their Teespring shirts, and I wear them to events regularly. Uh, it, they're, they're a cool crew. They have stuff on Patreon. Like, there's there's a lot of... Um, the, the the advent and, like, the proliferation of artists trying to grow their, their own revenue streams and communities via Patreon, um, like, it's often as easy as finding a painter, like, a professional painter that you like on Instagram, clicking on their bio, and then joining their Discord, like, they because they usually have one, like, if they have a Patreon, because Patreon and Discord, like, have a partnership or whatever. Mm. Um, you generally don't have to pay them a lot of money. Like, usually if you pay them a dollar a month, you get access to their Discord. That's usually how it works with most of these people. And it's as simple as finding a new community related to that specific artist. And that artist is usually in, like, the community, like, just hanging out, posting pictures of their work, maybe putting up PDF tutorials or whatever. But, like, I do that with Craft World Studio. I don't usually paint like craft world but it's always nice to like be around painters who like their style and learn from them as much as from craft world period aaron lovejoy miniature monthly uh, tj march tj tj marsh is another one if you uh, look mm -hmm. up journeyman miniatures for 
that's a little bit more of a very, 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 very high end. Uh, if you see, if you look at some of his stuff, um, especially since he paints like tremendous models, like the Carol Rudick dragons, like like this, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he does that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but like another one, I'm going to come back to is Goobertown Hobbies. Uh, Goobertown Hobbies is a community where he doesn't paint professionally. He's not trying to, uh, but his style is certainly clean enough and easy to emulate and find inspiration from because he puts a lot of heart into his miniatures. And he is a thriving community of people of various skill levels. And from just the exposure to a lot of people, either of your skill level or uh, maybe below you, or, or, or just looking for different things out of the hobby than you, that can be a good jumping off point to finding um, like new tricks and new philosophies about how to approach the hobby. It is an art. It is not a science. I think Tyler, you're looking for the scientific way yeah. to yeah to to like improve, and a bit. I don't think yeah, and I don't if, know if, if, it's, if efficient. Yeah, yeah, efficient um, way. Sort of like the machinist guide to to improving at miniature painting, and yes, mm. there there are there are there are um, uh, when I judge armies at painting competitions. I use a system that Vince uh, handed, handed off to me from how he judges the top end armies at Nova. And I believe yeah. the categories off the top of my head are um, uh, like just painting ability, technical, which is um, like this the second tier, which is your nuts and bolts. Like, did they file off all the mold lines? Did they clean everything up? Did they use color theory correctly? Um, mm. There is a book, uh, Color and Light by James Gurney. Yep. which is the guy who did Dinotopia. Um, hmm. You can either you can get it on Amazon for like two dollars, five dollars, or whatever. You can probably find a PDF for cheaper. Um, and it's just about trying to understand how we perceive color and how it we apply that. It is a very that. scientific breakdown of it. Like I cannot recommend color and light yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And it's. Uh, there, there is no silver bullet on how do we take our stuff from, um, like there, there is a Squidmore video, like Squidmore has a good, a few good videos when I, people are like looking to like go from like zero to baseline and yeah. he has, um, in the thumbnail, it's kind of like, like, a uh, an eight year old's version of a painted space Marine next to one of his sort of like, you know, quite volumetrically technically excellent sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and the, and the stuff in there will generally be about color theory, thinning your paints, um, brush control, stuff like that. I haven't watched the video in, in quite a while. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, just I, I, I understand this is a little bit of an open question, but it's like try and find people in various communities which are on mm. a similar journey to you. And mm -hmm. they will be able to have, like bounce ideas off of you as much as you will bounce ideas off of them about how to proceed. By the way, HUD awesome, said the man. answer is yeah. six days, 20 hours, 30 minutes, 36 seconds is the total length of the hobby cheating playlist. So there you go. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. uh, we're almost at a full week. You could turn that on and just watch for a whole week. <laughs> I am three and a half hours shy of a whole week. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, good. Uh, let's see. What other questions that people got? Um, I think we're, we're 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 catching up here. Very good. Yeah, Marty, I want you to talk about your your Lumineth army here for a moment while we're while all right. We're you really want me to ramble? To roll in. Well, yeah, you, know. you, you really want me to ramble? <laughs> no, what I, I want you to be specific oh, yeah. about it. Okay, so I'm not here. I'm not yeah. just inviting. Like certainly, you could talk. About yeah, 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 yeah. But there's uh -huh. a specific question I have for you. Okay. You set about with a goal with this army, right? This army came yes. on the back of your previous projects, which were both, you know, I think for you, like, both level ups. But this mm -hmm. was really an attempt to bust through a plateau in your painting. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. How mm -hmm. did you think about this army? Like, how did you go about it trying to do, mm -hmm. knowing that you were going to do the best you could do on every fig in this army? What... How yeah. did you set about planning it? Um, uh, well, co uh, th th this came at the beginning of lockdown, which mm -hmm. did help. And the original mentality I had was, I don't know when the event, the next event that I'm going to take this to be will be. 
However, the very first event that I go to after we're able to do events again is what this is for. Sure. So it could be a year from now. It could be three months from now. So I always kept a rolling deadline where I didn't want to slow down. I wanted to have an idea of um, a playable force from the get-go, so I didn't really let myself get too lazy while we were all stuck inside. Um, I had a very strong uh, sense of narrative and art history, and so I went about, and there is a long tweet thread if you go all the way back to 2021, where I broke down all of the inspirations. And um, I took the idea earlier in the show, we talked about test models. And I took that to an extent where I would just take individual scrap pieces and say, I want to test out different skin tones. What will these skin tones look like? Sure. I want to test out the different armor colors. What will different armor colors look like? And I went from like brass to gold. Um, and eventually I got to the red, which I ended up with here. Um, no, in no small part, thanks to you, because I did see your Crimson Cabal, and I was like, I want that. I don't care how complex it is, and I know you do want to revisit it, because we, um, you painted um, a Swordmaster of mine, which I have up here, uh, from the, the Rantcast Award, mm -hmm. and you and I asked you specifically, all right, you've now painted a model exactly in my color scheme. Uh how would you? How did you do it? And you basically said, "Well, I'm going to redo the red at some point because there's no reason for it to be that lengthy." Um, so I started with once I figured out all of the test colors. It's like I got the basing to where I want. I got the red to where I want. I got the skin to where I want. Um, I found an old metal high elf hero, and I did the color scheme. Everything came together, yep. and I got feedback on that. It's like this is pretend this is a unit champion. It's sure. just a high elf prince. It has all of the te all of the textures, which are going to be a ninety percent of soldiers, are on this model, mm -hmm. and here it is on the base. How does this look? And I got some feedback tweaked here and there, but it it was just something I really I put a lot of thought into it, and I didn't get a lot of feedback because it's like this looks great, keep going. Um, I think that's a, a thing of feedback that you give a lot yourself, and I try and do that as well. If you see someone has like an all around well painted army. And they're asking, it's like, well, how do I keep going from here? It's like, well, just, I like what I see, keep going. Make your darks a little darker, make your lights a little lighter, yep. maybe clean up some blends. But, like, there's nothing inherently incorrect or, or poorly yeah, done Yeah, just keep here. pushing. Just, just keep pushing. Yes. And that's why just I always talk pushing. about that endurance muscle. A lot of painting to a high level is just building up your endurance muscle and your willingness to keep painting what you're working on, to go back and forth, back and yeah. forth back and forth back and forth mm -hmm. and and over and over again like it, like there are parts of that display model i'm working on that i've painted like 10 times back and forth i'll paint it 10 more mm -hmm. before i'm done yeah um so like once i got to a level where i was doing the test models and everything the kits started to come out unfortunately very slowly due to like the beginning of the pandemic sure. just screwing with shipping and stuff um, it's like, well, I'm going to paint what's in the launch box. And then, all right, I have to wait two months until the rest of the army comes out. And then Games Workshop said, oh, Lumineth are like our quasi-poster boy faction. Here's three more releases. Um, which is like, that's cool for me, but um, it just gave me more to work with. I can't wait until there's like, I, I know it's not soon, but there is going to be a Lumineth sequel. And I'm going to try my best to push myself even further while keeping the troops relatively consistent, but we'll see. I, 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 I won't mentally speculate on what that will look like until it's on the horizon. Uh, but once I got to a point I was comfortable with putting that level of effort into all of the troops, and yes, it's annoying, um, especially since all of the trim on Lumineth, if it's sure. not the same color as, as the, the armor, you're going to be there for a while. Um, and I just tried to maximize, like I took uh, feedback from you, I took feedback from Aaron Lovejoy, I took feedback from Caleb Wissenbeck, um, and a bunch of other painters, um, and just like trying to make sure every inch of the model is, wor is, is putting in triple overtime. Are the shadows more, can I make the shadows a little bit more saturated? Can I add a little bit of weathering? Um, and I'm also looking for ways to cheat. I'm not painting all of the dirt onto each spearman's skirt like with like a fine detail brush i'm trying to do what i can 
to showcase that I'm putting in the extra mile and then some without, like, these aren't Golden Demon models. Sure. Maybe one of them could be. I could paint a Golden Demon model with this color scheme, uh, but that was just a matter of trying to pace myself uh, with that, knowing that I want that, wanted this to be the, the, that same level of effort. Yeah. Now, uh, like, making sure all of the characters were fully scratch-built, um, all of the crap I did to Teclis, like making my own version of him, um, everything I did on Avalonor. People always ask me what I did with Avalonor, and I told them, it's like, this one broke me, I'm never painting another Cow Mountain, you can't make me, I won't do it. Sure. Um, uh, but just well, in general... Because you to go for an extremely yeah. complex breakdown of it. But no, I mean, you, yes. you, you answered what yeah. I was looking for, right? Yeah. Which okay. is, yeah. you... you you thought about it, you did, you know, you planned, you tested some different things, you drew on different pieces of inspiration, both other miniatures, yeah. art, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then you put together a test model, and then you replicated it a few times, and you those were all cycles of feedback, right? And that you're, you were working with other people the whole time. So you were never, you weren't, you weren't like out there alone over, over your skis, right? Yeah. And I think that's really helpful. That's what I'm talking about with like that spotter or whatever. By the way, this is a one of the rat casts I was talking about here. I I, I knew he was in this. Yeah, slide great, great center. stuff. This is obviously one of my one of my dragon riders here. But this that's a good example of like colored non metallic metal. Um, okay. Uh, two plus tough. The amount of time you put into these bigger centerpieces makes me wonder. Do you focus on a single mini or jump around projects? I find that I get antsy if a project seems to drag on too much. Yeah, I mean that's like I said. Uh, I, so I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but it's worth it's worth sort of diving into there, Doug. Which is like I think you have to at the beginning of a project look and say, how much time am I going to spend per mini? How many minis do I have? Do I have it in me? Right? Um, like, and and if the answer is no, that's perfectly okay. It's a fair answer. You don't have to go any farther than you'd want. But I think it's worth it for the centerpieces. And then just like I said, cheap skate on the troops. It's fine. It's all good. But like when you come to when you get something really uh really cool you know some like when you get your bastion carthalos like i i you know, my or ratchian carthalos in my case mm -hmm. who i think is also in this slideshow somewhere um yeah. you know take the time on those guys because you're going to miss them when they're gone you only get one chance to paint that special character right so so put in the time like enjoy it drink it in you know let just soak it in until your fingers get pruny as it were Mm. Yeah. If 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 I just may add, um, I really love elves, and so I didn't mind. No. Sure yeah, all, hold on. Yeah. This is new yeah. information. Let me let me. I didn't let me mind making this, sure this. that those, making sure that those spearmen um, were all basically at a character level of detail, um, because like, and there was like a question earlier where it's like, how do you tell a story with an army if everything's like a thirty-two millimeter model? And it's like, well when they're all painted to the same high standard and they all have like these added elements of extra detail on top of you painting to a consistent standard, it, it becomes its own story. The army is the mm -hmm. canvas and you're showing that army to someone yeah, at an yeah, event, yeah, yeah. at a convention or just online. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Agree. Sorry. Agree completely. Mm -hmm. Two plus tough set. Yeah. Appreciate the answer. I'll try that on my glutose that's headed my way. Good show. Hey, absolutely brother. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you making some content again. Been watching. Two plus tough. If you're not subbed out there, you should be. Doug is truly one of the greatest human beings among us. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and Glutose. Confirm. Oh, absolutely. Glutose is exactly the example I would use for that. What a what a wonderful model to just go nuts with, right? He's got so much going on. Mm -hmm. You can have a great time painting him. That's a model you spend the time on. Spend a couple weeks on Glutose. It's okay. Do that. And then when it comes to, like, some dumb Bliss Barb Archers or Damonettes, we phone it in. That's when we phone it in. Because when they're all grouped together in a big unit, they're going to look cool. Right? Mm -hmm. And if they're Bliss Barb Archers, they're going to look dumb anyways, and they'll just die fast. So who cares? Don't put too much effort into it. But Glutose, <laughs> he's going to sit there for all five turns. He's not dying. That guy's yeah. got, like, vampire healing for, for no reason. So, you know, uh, <laughs> that type of healing that probably shouldn't exist outside. If it was just Glutose, I'd be fine. But no, we decided to get to every stupid vampire. Uh, <laughs> not bitter. Okay, cool. Hey, some iron jaws. Piggy piggy. Um All right. Tyler. Mm. You've got your Stormcast concept. Yeah. You said you're trying to put together a list. Right? Yeah. Or a thing. 
And, you know, we touched on this already, but somebody else had asked the question earlier as well. Like, hey, I take a while to paint, right? So what mm -hmm. if the meta changes? And I think you said something. So I want you to talk about how how you sort of think about lists and then how that influences what you want to paint. Because I think you have the healthy attitude to it. When you say you're trying to go for your list, as we mentioned earlier, it's not like you're trying to build some yeah. meta cracked thing. No. Because you yeah. know that's going to change. you got a different right. goal in mind. So what's your goal? Yeah, it's, it's similar to a friend of mine, Cody Bailey. I thought always did a nice job with this, where he approached armies without thinking about a particular window in time. And I mean, he's also, he's, he tries to build a collection of Soul Blight, a collection of Zinch, and then he can plug in, right, as things become more attractive or less attractive. Uh, he, so yeah, I, I think that's just generally the healthiest approach. If you are, are a player who's willing to figure out how to do as best you can with a list that isn't running the obviously strong elements, then you're going to be less impacted, right, by points changes. Right. If right. anything, you'll you'll get helped out by points changes. Yep. So that's that's generally where I like to try to operate. Not not always, but that's that's the aspiration. And yeah, it just it makes like this whole idea of oh crap, my I just painted this army and it got nerfed. You're you're just less susceptible to that happening to you. Hundred percent. You know, this is another reason why I like smaller armies. I've got my Iron Jaws up here on the screen right now. Uh, I got my my, yeah. my, my piggy boys. You know, that mm. was an army where I felt like I could get my head around it really easy. You know, mm -hmm. I've got some Ard boys. I've got uh, some brutes. I've got some pigs. I've got That's some right. mega bosses and war chantas and uh, big. Uh, a mega boss on Maw Crusher. And when I got all that done, I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, whatever, I'm good to go. You know, I got a dozen pig boys. Uh, mm -hmm. I got like 10 brutes, you know, 20 art boys, two mega bosses on foot. I had three mega bosses on foot now because I actually just really like painting them. Um, you know, mm -hmm. three war channas, um, one stupid caster because whatever. Uh, I never play him, but he exists. And, you know, mm -hmm. the mega boss on Maw Crusher. And I was like, I'm, I'm good. No matter how the list sort of move around, I can, you know, more pigs, less pigs. So on and so forth, right? So it's it's when you're dealing with those smaller forces, same thing kind yeah. of with FEC. It's like you know you do a bunch of ghouls, some cryptors, crypt flares, you know, a couple big a couple big monsters, and you're good to go, right? Like so stuff. That's right. what I did with the. Uh, it's what I did with the slaves to darkness. Like I I uh, yeah. I did I didn't like I could have since I made the entire army from scratch. I could have made an army of like sixty splintered fang, but no, I was like let's do <laughs> chaos knights. Ten chosen, six Farren guards, some dinky characters, and yep. like an endless spell. Let's go. And yep. I was able to do that in eighty days. Now I have a hyper aggro slaves of darkness army for whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean like it's it's I think to me that's that's the exact opposite situation, mm -hmm. but a great mm -hmm. way to deal with it, right? So like Iron Jaws is like seven units or whatever, right? And, mm. and barring our big pig. Where is big pig? But anyways, <laughs> um, you know, like the, but the point is like S2D, that army is huge, huge, yeah, like ridiculous, yeah. right? But you mentioned that like, well, the way I went was by painting the core of the army, warriors, yes. knights, Varengard, chosen, like chosen. the things that are the, the obvious center core of the army, like center mass, right? Yeah. You aimed center mass. Mm -hmm. And in general, with that kind of thing, it's usually a good strategy because that kind of stuff will always be able to be used in list to some degree or another, right? Yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah, we, we, we don't know if Splintered Fang are going to change, right. even though currently they are the strongest thing. I went for something a little bit more evergreen. Right, right, exactly. Uh, and I think that's uh, a good way to navigate those like tons of scrolls things. Now that probably yeah. doesn't apply to Stormcast because who even knows what center mass is for them? <laughs> Stormcast sure. is just a problem. But but like um, so that you need to figure out like a, a, a more specific area. Like what am I going for? Am I doing sacrosanct right. or or thunderstrike stuff or whatever? That's something right? I was gonna say. But we talked about it on the show before, right? But like one of the critiques of the Stormcast Battle Tome and our Battle Tome review show we did a while back was they don't have enough incentives to run a sacrosanct chamber list. Here's right. two thousand points of sacrosanct, right? Here's through the two thousand points of Thunderstrike. Like there are so many, there are a number of layers. I mean, this is the, going back to the the Highlander format, all these things, right? Like I still feel if I were running the studio, 
I would figure out how to fix this gap that I still feel that we have systematically in this game, where the gap between the armies that you see that are sufficiently viable competitively and the armies that would look awesome because yeah, they sure. have great variety. They reflect a model range, right? Like I, yesterday I played Slant Star Master, a Skink Star Seer, a Scarbet on Agrodon, uh, 20, war 20 Source Warriors, 10 Source Warriors, 2 Skinks, 3 Agrodons, 3 War Spawn. I could have thrown in a uh, Spawn of Shotek, right? But like, that's, that, that li that's the kind of list you want to be meaningfully competitive in the game. I'm not sure it is right now. I mean, we'll, we'll see, right? But sure. anyway, that's, that's, that's my usual rant about, I just, that frustrates me almost more than anything else. And that this gap and unaddressed issue that we have right now in this game, we've had it for a long time. Does that make yeah, sense? It totally does. And, and I really, really, really think it's just a function of the reality that, um, you know, that, that like, uh, that books with giant, we still haven't figured out what to do with, uh, books with, um, uh, with giant numbers of, of, of war scrolls. That's sure. Right? Yeah. Because you, you just don't see the same problem in uh, in books where the war scrolls are more limited, really, or at least not as much. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, in mm -hmm. general, broadly construed, the internal balance is just a completely different picture. So. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, re referencing centerpieces and, and going far, this is a demon prince, obviously. Um, you know, like, this is a dude that I spent more time on right because he's a really uh -huh. fun guy and i wanted him to be something special and so he has this whole lighting scheme and all of that right like this is the type of model that you you like plow some effort into because it's just a lot more fun like and that's and, my next plateau that i gotta that i that i'm trying to go after but that's a discussion for another time because this sure. is this is an excellent model not only is it well photographed but like you can clearly see all of the effort that you put into it, like the 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 glow from below it's etc like that it's it's excellent yeah i was happy with how this guy came out uh funny part is i don't own this guy anymore how about that i ended up i actually ended up painting this for a friend yeah. in the end and, and gave it away so. where's that where's that from that model it is what, a the... 3d print from arch villain games i believe okay yeah that's sweet i, I don't remember seeing that dude that's amazing yeah he was fun I said I don't I don't I don't own him anymore. I, I just I, yeah. a friend did a very nice favor for me and I was like, well here you can you can have this. So there you go. Yeah. Um Okay. Speaking of, of different light and, and even even small characters can still get that attention. This is uh what Cato or whatever his name is. Cesar. I don't know. Uh Cato as as E K R. Now that you got there it. You go. I I feel like I was in the I was close. Yeah, I mean I haven't even read the book. Are you sure? You know, I mean, to me, uh, this is the kind of stuff that, like, I, I think about doing a whole army in this kind of a cast glow, and I think that could be really fun on something like Soul Blight. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how well it actually sells across an army. I think these kind of lighting effects in general are, are, are one, they're hard to execute, and two, they don't feel like they'd actually work across a whole army. <laughs> because mm -hmm. why is everybody standing right near a fire? <laughs> right? That's so I think true. this is... It's a good example of where, like, a thing might look cool on one model, but it's not going to look cool over your whole army, right? Mm, if you yeah. had 80 zombies and they all have, like, just forward right <laughs> lights, like, what is each one of them carrying around their own little personal campfire that they right. set up right in front of them, right? So, uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Terrier Halo said something here that I think is really important. Terrier Halo said, was driving so late, but if you're a pleb like me, think before getting feedback. Usually the suggestions are 72 steps into the future. Oh, you managed to prime a model. Well, time to learn non-metallic metal. Nothing chafes my my bottom more than than that kind of like uh, advice that's like way above where the painter is clearly punching. I consider mm -hmm. it like my absolute mission in, in my patreon for my people who do re with the review and feedback tier where i'm like giving them coaching them on, on individual models mm. to make sure i'm tailoring the feedback i'm giving to wherever they happen to be on their journey a good yeah. coach someone who's actually like who knows how to give feedback will be 
tailoring the feedback to what to where you're at right um mm -hmm. and i think that's really 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 important um, because everybody's different and you shouldn't feel like all of a sudden you have to do non-metallic metal that's all nonsense right like no you don't mm -hmm. like you should you yeah. should be focused on working on whatever your next thing is right and, and that's I, gonna be I, very different for anybody if if i if i just may may add to that i, I always tell people this to seek informed <laughs> feedback yeah, now yeah. this is a this, this this is a little contradictory because uh, based on like Tyler's question, it's like well, where do I go next? Um, maybe a book like Color and Light, like by James Gurney, helps you get the the um, uh, the vocabulary. Because one mm -hmm. of the hardest questions to answer is uh, when I get feedback or when I'm when people are looking for feedback from me, they hand me a model and it's like, what do you think? And I'm like, uh, where do I start? Because if I don't know where to start with where someone's at, it becomes like a, an infinite regression loop. And so it's always helpful if you go to like a convention or something to, to seek feedback from um, a more experienced painter. Maybe come mm -hmm. with a little bit more articulated questions. I'm having trouble with smooth blends. I'm having trouble yeah. with uh, maybe murky color schemes. And too much of the stuff is one color. Um, like, uh, people were asking me at, like, the Games Workshop event, because I was not on the 40k, like, I was not in the 40k event, so, like, 40k painters were, like, either asking mm -hmm. for input or, 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 or some, something like that, and it's like, well, um, and, and one of the first things is, like, well, I, I, I ask, it's like, first of all, show me your best model, show, show me your favorite one, because if the effort that you can put on this guy can be replicated across everything else, if you put the time in, um, and, and stuff like that. So I, I always try and work back and forth with the hobbyist, and it always helps if they at least have some baseline terminology rather than just aimless, I need I would like help, please. Mm. Yeah. I want to use this model. I put this in here because I wanted to use this girl to talk about an example. So this is um, from Creature Caster. So I wanted, two things yeah. I, I want to say about this model. The first thing is I didn't fully assemble the model. She's missing claws. Like, normally this model has even more crap on it. I didn't uh -huh. put it in. I didn't care. Like, I didn't need it. She didn't need it. Model doesn't need it. So, always feel free to leave stuff off your models. Like, you don't need to put every belt and doodad and bojangle on your model. That's number one. Number two is, this model is is overwrought from a sculpt perspective. Um, like, there's uh -huh. too much going on. Like, it's too much texture yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I had a very simple uh, suggestion here. Like, when you look at this, if you think this is painted well... I have tricked you. I have fooled you. Okay? Because the skin is painted pretty well. I focused, I mentioned earlier, like, focus in on the stuff that matters. I took a lot of effort on the skin. Her skin has, like, a lot of color variation and tone to it. It looks even sort of better in reality. It was hard to actually photograph this. And, uh, and it's so eye-catching and bright that, like, that's what you look at. You look at her skin. All of that, like, spider webby garbage texture that they built into the model... I cannot explain how phoned in that is. That's just layers of dry brushing, homie. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And no one would ever notice because who cares? Uh, if you've ever watched um, uh, Catch Me If You Can, uh, you know, yeah. uh, the whole thing of like, uh, about uh, you may, they're looking too busy looking at the pinstripes, right? When he like yeah. walks past all the cops because he, he has all the uh, flight attendants with him or whatever. It's mm -hmm. the same trick, right? It's the same trick. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. with these girls, so like, this is my, some of my, uh, doc, uh, some of my daughters of, of Cain. These are some witch elves that I've got. Um, like, again, if you go, if you get up close to these girls, are these blends smooth? Nah. Nah. That's not. But, uh, mm -hmm. doesn't matter because the, the value's there. The contrast is there. The, the, the composition, the color is there. So it looks eye-catching. Even though if you hold them up close, you're like, oh, that's not as smooth as it could be. Well, yeah, sure, yeah. of course. Like, sacrifice smoothness for impact every time. Every time. Every mm -hmm. time. Models that have the right color palettes and tone and variance and that kind of thing will always beat a perfectly blended but boring miniature. In anything except Golden Demon. <laughs> uh, My friend where, where Scott Sproul has talked to me a lot about this, like the idea of, yeah, I guess the word would be contrast, like colors, basic color contrast that, yeah, yeah you, 
where it just it really catches your eye, stands out, even if it's not technically executed at a high level, or uh, what experienced painters would consider a high level. It just it looks amazing to the untrained or the average eye, and yeah, uh, he's he's always emphasized that in a lot of his painting. Hundred percent, I agree with that completely. Like that is excellent advice because that kind of like having proper contrast, having good you know color composition, like bright colors that catch the eye and stuff like that, where where you can, right? Or having the color, even if you have minimal stuff, it's mostly white or it's mostly brown, but having your bright colors be in balance around the miniature, so in a triangle or a square or a circle around the miniature where it's mm -hmm. sort of evenly distributed, those kinds of things that make it pleasing to the eye are just like ten times more valuable than a super smooth yeah. blend. Okay. Yeah. Every time. Makes your army look cooler from a distance. We, we tend to view models from a distance. This is why, right. like, Beast of an Armies are always rough when they're just like, I see people paint them just like brown on browns. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they don't yeah. have to be like that. You can do all sorts of bright colors around. They're wild. They can be They can be whatever, man. You know, it's chaos, right? Go nuts. Mm -hmm. Like, so, so make those choices. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Marty, I've got a question for you. Are you ready? I'm going uh -huh. to yeah. pass AG's question over to you. Do you yep. have any tips for black Space Marine armor? Yeah. Um, the key to any black... <laughs> I'm going to be quoting like or paraphrasing a lot of your videos, but it's kind of a universal idea. The trick to black textures is where you start using paint that isn't black. Um, we tend to think of like the classic Q spectrum, like um, our, um, I, I can't tell where, are, are both of my hands on screen? Yep. Um, say here is black, here is white. Yep. We tend to think about a very smooth gradient where it's like a perfectly, like if you open up Photoshop or something and the, the, the gradient is like just this gradual one step per frame all the way here, that creates one even perfectly gray and it reads as gray because we're, we're half black and half white that transitions even. What you really want to think about is pushing it the more, like the, the more surface needs to actually be black. You want to, you want to push the, the, when you start transitioning to white or whatever is, is your, your final highlight color. We want to shorten that transition as much as we can so that the eye can read it as black. Now, I um, go into this in, in more detail, actually. I'm, I'm, I, I did the class at, at the Kill Team Open this year, and I'm, I'm talking with uh, the Wicked Dicey guys to try and do it in Everwinter. Basically, how to paint black and white without using black or white. Uh, so the trick is to not actually use black paint, but the general principle is to try and... Um, uh, uh, like, a lot of people go too bright too quickly when they're painting um, uh, like specular highlights on their models. Um, and this is true of like a lot of colors. And I think it's just when we're working with such small scale figures, 32, 28 sort of thing, um, it pays dividends to try and hold off um, using brighter colors to create those gradients. Does that yeah. make sense, Vince? Mm -hmm. It does. I'll, I'll say this though. I actually want to take it back a step. So my answer would be this. Mm -hmm. First decide whether or not you want to paint let the paint do the work for you or uh, or whether you want to do the work. So here's what I mean by that. With these towel, they have black armor. This little, this little towel boy I'm working on. He's black. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know how mm -hmm. much I blended or did any kind of color gradient across the, the figure? That would be 0%, my dog. That whole thing is just done in Abaddon black. Flat. Called yeah. it a day. Okay. Because it's a satin color, and they're flat plates. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to let the satin do the work for me. Mm. Done and dusted. Yeah. Then I edge highlighted it. So they have very intense edge highlights all over the thing. So that's question. That's step one. You know, like, one way you can paint the black is just be like, no, I'll just paint it all satin black, let the satin do the work for me, and then I'll just do edge highlights like crazy. Right? That's an option. Option two is I can try to create these the volumetric highlighting, because black isn't really black in reality. Right, it's gray and it has all sorts of other colors in it. And the simple rule to follow there, if you're going to do that, is at least 50% of the surface needs to be black or, or some approximation of it. Whatever the eye is going to read is black. Could be chromatic black, could be anything. 
the other 40 ish percent 40 plus percent like 50 a little more than 50 percent needs to be black so the other 40 ish percent could be whatever grays into whites use colors in there blues sure greens doesn't matter it'll read as black because your eye will just force it to happen if you ever looked at a shiny black car almost none of that shiny black car is actually black but your eye mm -hmm. still treats it like such mm -hmm. right so just decide which way you want to go that's what i'll say all right let's start writing this up got a couple more pictures to go through big giant guy it's my uh it's my king broad there uh he's got his little crown and his horns fun conversion project I think conversions are a fun way to to motivate yourself to paint as well. We didn't talk about that as much, but Marty, mm -hmm. you used it extensively. Man Zach Miniatures yeah. asked a question earlier. He said, you know, how do I get myself... I love converting and sculpting and all of that, but mm -hmm. I... Uh, painting a thing he sculpted for me. And he said, how do I transition into painting? Well, Man Zach, my answer is going to be much the same as it was earlier for people who asked how they get started, which is just do it. There is no other secret, my dog. It is, you know, give it a shot. Paint something. Pick one of your things and start painting it. You've got a lot of things. There'll always be more things. It doesn't yeah, matter if I, you mess this one up. Uh, him, him and I have been messaging privately since uh, we were we were talking about, because I am uh, a Terminator chaplain. He helped, uh, 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 like, he sculpted a lot of the detail on there for me, like, changed a lot of it around. And he was, like, working on this, this gorgeous Araby army. And, I, and like also like Gene Steeler cults or something like that. And it's like, yeah, it just that I, I cannot emphasize that that advice enough because I've tried to say that to him personally. It's like it's it's one of those things where if you don't take the first step, then you never will. Yep, and, exactly. Like, how do you how do you how do you walk a very long distance? I don't know. Take one step, repeat. Right. That's that's it. It's nothing more complicated than that. OK, maybe yeah. bring maybe bring some water, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess don't walk outside right now if you're if you're in the Midwest where I am because it's just like a haze outside. We've yeah. got that. We've got that 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 fun haze going on right now. Blade uh, Runner sky. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh little Skaven boy with my uh with my mm -hmm. scenic base. Bases do a lot of work. They can also be a fun project. Don't sleep on the possibility for a base. Uh, you know, I know, I know, Marty, you've thought a lot about bases, Tyler. Hey, mm. where, where are you at with your basing journey? Where, where, how, you, how do you feel about bases right now, right? Uh, I'm enjoying the Games Workshop website basing style. Some, some that's, texture, that's a couple at. tufts, living your best yeah. life. Brown brims, baby. Well, obviously that's wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, it's, your, it's your first full army, so you got to make some wrong choices. That's just, that's just part and parcel. But... um. Uh, I got a lot of my basing stuff from James Wapple. There's another painter that you can like uh, take a look at. Like all my Luminat stuff was based on his Lord of the Rings basing style for some stuff. It's it's you'd be surprised what like what really cool eccentric ideas a lot of these more advanced painters say for very specific projects. And you just like take them like little bits here and there and just throw mm -hmm. them onto your own stuff, see what works. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think the answer is there's absolutely nothing wrong. You know, uh, Uncle Adam's also a big fan of just, like, keeping most of his bases quite simple because he doesn't want yeah. them to distract from the model. And I that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, mm -hmm. that's the beauty of a base. I don't think there's anything wrong with bases being, like, for, especially in, for, for army painting. Like, if you're doing some display figure, you should, you should obviously put some work into the base, right? Because it needs to be telling a story. But if it's for your army, the classic Games Workshop, mud and a couple tufts, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. The the main show is the figures, right? Again, are you trying to win best painted? Okay, maybe put in a little more effort, right? But but at the same time, that yeah. shouldn't be the goal. <laughs> that actually was one of my questions for you guys. So I did my friend Linus told me to do Sterling Mud, make some like puddles, and then I did dry brushing, different dry brushing. Sure. And then added some rocks and some tufts and called it a day. Is that Fine. like what is essentially done when you go to Games Workshop's website and you're, you're looking at these bases? With yeah, the, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Okay. Nothing, nothing more complicated to, than it. No, they, they do really, the Sterling mud. <laughs> yeah, they really don't put any effort into their bases. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend, uh, 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 I wouldn't recommend Sterling mud, just because you're overpaying for a tiny pot of of mud. Okay. <laughs> Like, sure. which is ridiculous. I will give you two recommendations instead that you should be using. 
Okay. So one in the art world, one in the in our hobby world. So the first is if you want to yeah. stick in the hobby world, Vallejo makes these ground texture bottles. These are about 13, oh, okay. 12, 13 bucks for this massive thing. It's just it's just colored paste inside. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. nice. You can spread it over your miniature and paint it, and that's it. Like just turn it brown. You can buy it in colors too, but you should always paint it. You know, okay. That's option one. Option two from the art world is this is um Liquitex coarse texture medium. And it, mm. But other other plenty of but you don't have to get Liquitexes or something, but like many paint brands make these giant bottles of coarse texture medium. It's used for canvas mm. painting when you want texture in your, your canvas paint. Like it's meant to be mixed with acrylic paint when you're actually trying to create physical texture on yeah. a canvas painting, right? Like that's okay. the point of it. It's it's a mixing medium. But it's just it's just te it's just textured paste. When you put it on a base, it just looks like mud. Okay, nice. like it's in scale for us. And then the final thing that I'll say is, um, have you heard about this place called Outdoors? Have you heard? Uh, of it? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm actually spending time there walking. As I told you, I'm getting in the habit of walking every night, yeah. hour, hour and a half. Fantastic. So, yeah. uh, as you're walking. The more you paint, the more you'll start looking around and noticing things in the world. Okay. Mm. And you should use those for inspiration uh, for your painting. But especially like taking pictures of cool logs and trees mm. and flowers and stuff like that. But interesting thing you can find outdoors is this thing called dirt. And uh, yeah. you can just you can just get like a like a like a plastic tub or something and just mm. get get some of that dirt and put it inside and then dry it out and then glue it to your base. And that also works. <laughs> you can just use right, dirt. Right <laughs> like it's fine. <laughs> uh, if you're at the so beach, on, you can uh, also get some sand. Some sand, sure. <laughs> Don't have to go to Walmart. Yeah. Uh, for the paste, is that something you just find easily at Hobby Lobby or? Yeah, along basic, those lines, basic hob or? I mean, I wouldn't buy from Hobby yeah. Lobby, but yes. Um, but in general, yes, most 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 like Michaels and sure. craft stores, you, you will your right. your Joanne Fabrics, your Michaels, your whatever, yeah. will will all have that stuff. Yeah, your your yeah. Dick Blicks, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yep, yep. Gotcha. Absolutely. Um, also, I made a video about this. It wasn't a very watched video, but I but I do stand behind it because so like one fun thing you can find in a lot of those like hobby stores is sections mm. dedicated to fairy gardens. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like a whole thing. People make. Oh yeah, I remember that bit. I, I remember that uh that video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Amish country stores not far from my house all have these like fairy garden places because it's a very popular thing, right? And if you go in that fairy garden area of your craft store, your garden center, or whatever, holy crap, man! It is a gold mine for basing stuff. Just like okay. dirts and sands and rocks and cool little items and everything you could ever want. Like it's amazing. Mm. And it's all cheap as chips because it's meant to be bought like because when they're making these fairy gardens, they're making like a, a planter like this, you know, mm. is like the fairy garden. Right. So they're using tons of this stuff. Right. Yeah. So it can't be expensive. It's not like a, the, you don't pay the, the hobby markup, basically. Right. Um, right. You know, that my one of my missions is don't pay for dirt. <laughs> yes, exactly. Recasted brain cell says the government doesn't want you to know that this, but dirt is free. Exactly. <laughs> dirt is free. Uh, that is true. Free dirt. Uh, hey, there's Ratchet and Carthalos. There he is. All right, we got there. Um, so, uh, AG said, I live near a beach. Just collected a ton of sand from the beach, baked it, been using that. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Drying it out, you can either like air dry it in the sun for a long time, or yeah, you can just throw it in the oven and put it on like a relatively low temp and let it go for a little while and it'll kill everything in it hmm. i am i am a bad example right now because one of the the narr like the rules that i gave myself for this the, the 40k was no natural no natural materials at all so i've been making a bunch of bases out of like plastic hard and wire and all the just sort of blade runner junk that you can think of that's fine uh, so yeah. it's for sam's tyranids sam lens is tyranids he wanted cool little weird alien, like, things, like alien plants or something like that on the base. Like weird twisting alien shapes, sort of like Geiger, mm. you know, H.R. Geiger kind of shapes. So he went out and bought dried, like, pasta 
like the weird spiral pasta oh, wow. and then started yeah. cutting them up and tearing them and put those on the base and then glued over them and, and painted them. It's perfect. <laughs> that's, it looks that's so brilliant. weird. They look like weird little alien, you know, plants and stuff, but it's just dried like Rotelli pasta or something. Wow. So I love that. Truly anything can be, can, anything can be basing material if you, if you want it enough. Hmm. Uh, Terry or yeah. says, I collected snow and ice this winter in little jars for basing, but it wasn't worth the effort. Trust me on this. Yeah, good call. Did, yeah, did, snow did and ice is the one project you're um, going to do. You, you made a basing video for your Votan guy, and you specifically used, like, just junk from, like, a Smash computer or something? Yeah, yeah. If you've got old electronics, I never throw out old electronics. I smash them with a hammer and collect the bits from the inside. Don't do that with, like, CRT monitors. You'll kill yourself, obviously, so please don't do that. But, like... <laughs> mice and you know like keyboards and you know, just stuff like that that, that tends to break yeah. down over time like things like yeah. that that aren't harmful once they're unplugged right things that have no internal power source of their own mm -hmm. so. uh, another basic question so of, of course uh, we all get familiar with gw's painting style the citadel citadel approach sure. uh, one person i've really enjoyed over the years is amy snugs uh, follow her on instagram I, sure. I feel like she's reflective of that style she paints for siege studios sure. i don't know if she has a lot of videos or patreon but are there any folks online uh, youtube in particular that you guys think like give good good tutorials or good guidance on that gw style or anybody that stands out in particular? Yeah, like sure. One, one, so, I mean, uh, like, Tyler Mengel is probably a great example of somebody who's... Yeah, who's that makes very sense. ...very much in the, in the GW style. And he, he'll often, like, post up his, like, the Instagram Evy Metal style, you know, I applied this, then I applied this, then I applied this, then I applied this, and and, and sort of how right. I applied them. So he does that I know he's lot. had some warmer community articles, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That video's done. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think he's... He's somebody that jumps out to me as somebody who who's making content and is very much in a sort of in the in the traditional GW vein. Now, obviously, mm. one of your best examples, the Ur example, the king himself bow down, give give praise, uh, our one true lord and savior, Darren Latham. Uh, right. Mm. I mean, not Darren Latham. Well, that's where I was going. Exactly. <laughs> Darren's channel might be gone, but not Darren Latham is still around. <laughs> And uh, somebody took down all those videos and then re-uploaded them, uploaded them under not Darren Latham. So, uh, uh, that's yes, great. Uh, that's that would be the you know your that's that's the place to be if you really want to see how it is. That's the, mm -hmm. I mean that you yeah. know he was an heavy metal painter, head of the studio for years, and so I mean yeah, he the, the... consistently wins Golden Demon like in the open category with just like with just miniatures. He just paints so, miniatures. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Somebody had uh, mentioned the, Peachy. Oh yeah, go go ahead, Marty. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one in the chat for Infernal Bro. It it really depends on what you're looking for because uh, mm. GW. It's important to remember has two different studios. Uh, they have oh, the sure. Armies and Battlefield Studio, and sure. they have the Evy Metal Studio. The Evy Metal Studio well, are painters. Technically, Fox. there's another one too because the the Specialist Games painters and studio yes, are completely separate as well. Yes, that's mm. true. Um, and they're doing both, but they're doing it for their Specialist Games. Well, and but, all of them was, paint in a different style. <laughs> Yes, mm. um, uh, but like the point point being is like there there are people who used to work on the armies in Battlefield Studio like Peachy, um, and they are going to paint to a standard even if it's in the Games Workshop style, which is at a I don't want to say lower end, but it is more a more simplified version than say uh, yeah the the, the I, I think they're all achievable. It's just it gets mm. back to the very first question that we answered, which was. How long do you want to spend on this project? Sure. Uh, yeah. uh, and so it's like someone like Peachy or Duncan. Um, I oh, had a yeah, long yeah. conversation with Duncan back when he worked with Games Workshop. Um, mm. And it was like the first time I had entered, a, it was like a painting competition at like an official Games Workshop event in Texas. And he was there as like the star. And I asked him, it's like, well, don't do you enter anything in Golden Demon? He's like, no, I specifically like painting to a standard, which is teachable. And that's just yeah. my hobby. I don't really like Golden Demon. I don't really like painting competitions. And so, mm -hmm. um, I think watching his videos or some or people who paint like that is a good example of getting there. And Tyler Mengel, getting back to it, is like probably mm -hmm. the best bridge, where he's as precise as an heavy metal painter, but he has as few steps as an armies and battlefields painter. Yeah, sure. The other two that jump out would be like Juan Hidalgo, who uses who focuses more on like contrast paints in his painting yeah scott mentioned style. that 
and then yeah. um mamacon who yeah. posts mainly on instagram and stuff mamacon's also like a very very much in the school of like darren latham style painting and stuff like that so yeah yeah okay all right sweet uh, uh, you yeah. know really really excellent painter who has lots of great stuff and he does have a patreon as well uh hmm. yeah uh this is one of my vermin lords sure why not oh, yeah. she has less armor than most vermin lords but look she's got the little ball see that's there you go yes so she was fun i don't know i just threw her in because i thought she was fun <laughs> there you mm -hmm. go hey Nothing and sometimes stuff is just fun yeah. Like I, I, I need to work. I, I've been trying to work on stuff that is more fun. Maybe it's not as jolly, but like the, the, the bust I'm anor for Nova is just like a, it's like a tutor guy. It's, it's vaguely historical. It's just some fun textures and stuff. It doesn't always have to be like this incredibly 40 chess, well thought out custom Warhammer army. No, this is just a chance. Like the most fun thing on her was doing the little lightning emanating from her head up into her horns in the dark spot. That was just a fun thing to try. Uh, yeah. So, like, up here in her head, she's got this lightning that's coming out into the horns. There's little cracks of, like, warp energy. And I was just like, oh, that's a fun thing. She's got warp stone shards growing out of her, so why not? Like, okay. Seemed like a fun thing to do. Like, obviously, that's not modeled in there. That's all just flat space normally. But I was like, that's eh, too much flat space. You need something interesting. Let's try some little lightning in there. That seems like a cool thing. You know, sometimes think models are just a chance to, like, try new things and, and, and play around and, and see what you get. And this is one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, are you answering Kyle Nelson's question, Martin? Uh, yeah, I'm writing it down. Yeah, I light versus right. dark, warm versus cold, saturated versus desaturated, texture, like matte versus saturated, and I can't remember the fifth one right now. It's very late. That's fine. When you type uh, your answers, I'll see if I can cover you there. All right, cool. Yeah, there you go. There, I typed four of them. I can't remember the fifth one right now. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, yeah. light versus dark, warm versus cold, saturated versus desaturated, uh, Texture versus smooth, right? And and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rough, rough versus smooth, not matte versus satin. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And matte versus uh, satin would be your other one. Like yeah. There. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Uh, you had them all. There you go. Yeah. Uh, fun vampire lord conversion here. Uh, this guy was a lot of fun. Playing, working in desaturated colors. A uh, good example of uh, just like using very small color areas and having everything else be desaturated. Mm -hmm. you guys have a favorite uh, model that you painted oh over boy. the years oh boy <laughs> what a question uh yeah. i want to ask you tyler i'm gonna turn that right back around to you before i answer yeah. i'm gonna ask you sure. you've, you've painted your way through an army what was your favorite thing you painted what was yeah, the, the plague drone you enjoy the most the, the second set of plague drones i i liked how they came out yeah for my uh, very new level uh, I enjoy how they look uh, from uh, you know just looking at them on the table. They they look they look kind of nice. Nice. So yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy painting a unit of plague drones. What so so what made them fun? Let me see if I can if I can crack your answer down here. Sure. You had a fun time painting them. You yeah. felt like you knew like you because it was a second unit. You felt like you knew what you were doing a little more, right? So you had a little more. A little more. Going yeah. Into it, right. And yeah. then when you looked at the final product, you were like, yeah, pretty good. Uh, it's like right. the yeah and the contrast like the wings right you can really have the wings stand out a little bit with just some i don't know if i'd call it highlight edge highlighting it probably would not be but like very approximate edge highlighting with uh sort of the zenithal highlighting uh slap chop technique right and it's just yeah you look at them and okay the areas that should be popping are popping and cool yeah it brings brings you some joy looking at looking at your models and i think you just hit the fundamentals of, of what any answer would consist of right mm. which is you approach something that you liked the base figure you had a fun time working on it like it wasn't painful for various and sundry reasons right yeah you felt like you were even if you were experimenting or pushing yourself you felt like you were able to solve the challenges you ran into yeah okay and then when the model finished you looked at it and went yeah all right that came out that came out something like was in my head. Maybe not exactly, right. but like it, you know, I got to a good place, right? Yeah. And to me, that's the magic combination when, when that mm -hmm. takes place. And, and that's not going to be every figure. By the way, there's no, just to be clear, for somebody who's painted as long as I have, there's no point you hit where that's every model. Sure. <laughs> okay. That makes sense, yeah. There's no like sudden magic day 
where all of a sudden everything is is enjoyable to paint. And you look at it and go, boy, strength on strength, baby. All I'm doing is killing it. All I like, think you just <laughs> you don't ever walk in DJ Calleting, right? Just like right. All I do is win, baby. Every <laughs> time, like it's just never gonna happen, right? I saw a video of Emma Stone lip syncing that today. Came across, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, uh, and you know, I there there will always be things that you paint that you're like, well, that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't that didn't work. That's fine. Right. You you figure out why it didn't work. You learn from it. And you go on. That's honestly going to be much more instructive to you than the things that you came out. Do you finish and you're like, yeah, okay, good, done. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so have you filibustered long enough? I mean, I, I know we're big fans of the filibuster in this country. We are. But we are. Do, do, I, I, Marty my got an answer? answer is I, I, yeah, I'll let Marty go. Ha, huh. Marty, what's your favorite model you've ever <laughs> painted? Um, I don't, don't, don't give me any of this child. I'm like, you can't, you can't pick a favorite child. Give me an answer. No, 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 no. I've, I've, I've been thinking about it. I do, I do have like a final list of like three or four. Um, and mm. the problem is, is like, there's something I'm working on right now that I want to be my favorite because it's a okay. custom sculpt of a character of mine from Elden Ring. And that's like oh, something man. I'm really trying. Yeah. But the problem is, is like, I'm trying to juggle painting that to the level I want. I think the answer yeah. is that it's just not going to be ready for Nova and I'm going to enter a different bust instead. And it's just, I'm mm. going to take more time painting it. Like, um, mm. I'll just, I'll just put it in frame. It's actually quite large. Like Vince, this is, this is, this is like, oh, yeah, this, sure. is, this is, this is a this is a large model. I mm. want this one to be my favorite because of the sentimental value behind the sculpt. But yeah. it's probably going to end up being the Journeyman Morrigan um, or um, the Venari Regent, the guy on the Llama Cat, or sure. uh, the Cathalar, which is mm. uh, the woman who's on the stacked base and there's like the little skeleton like in the hovel. Um, I, mm -hmm. I just feel like everything really came together for that model. So it's going to come down to one or two Lumineth characters or Morrigan. And if you really had to make me pick, I think it would end up being that Cathalar. I really enjoyed that piece. Um, even though it's not like a golden demon, like display figure. It's a very, mm -hmm. I mean, it did, no, it did, it did get a uh, bronze at, um, at Capital Palette for, for master. So it, it, it did, nice. it is like a display figure too. But, um, mm. Yeah, so um, I, yeah. I'm always going to have fun with, like, Luminous characters, yeah. 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 So I'm going to nice. say your question is invalid because it's because there's no, like, best movie, but I can give you categories. So if you're asking me, like, favorite figure army, favorite figure display, favorite figure vehicle, I can mm -hmm. do that breakdown, right? Because it's more yeah. like Whatever a helps you sleep at night. Absolutely. Yeah, whatever helps you sleep at night. In which case, then, the answer in order would be... Um, honestly, I think my mega boss on Maw Crusher because I just love the conversion. I think he's a big giant. Oh, okay. Cool, and and yeah. I like how he came out. And he's fun. I've got a photo of him in here yeah. somewhere, but I don't know where. Yeah. Um, there's, there's some Alpha Legion I did for the Horus Heresy Weekender event. Uh, it's a whole army there. Uh, I actually put mm -hmm. this on the table and played a game of uh, Tenth Edition with these guys, by the way. Um, display model. Uh, there is a model I painted for Squid Mars Quick Kickstarter for his for his models that i did i don't remember what the name of it is but she's floaty air magic elf girl and mm. i just feel like i achieved stuff with that that i had never achieved before i really think it's like like from the inner glow and the smoke and the white cloth and the blue uh you know metallic cybernetic bits and stuff like that because all of the elves in his world are like cybernetic enhanced um i think mm. that that was just a sort of like it was a piece where I got to the end of it and I, I had pushed myself in it and it worked. And I, I still think it's one of my favorites I've done. This is maybe like a year ago or whatever. I did that one. Oh, awesome. Um, and then, so that's what army display and then vehicle is just, it, that's easy. Whatever night I painted last. So in this case it'd be Bane lash. Right. So like, yeah. 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 Cause I'm, I've I only painted one nights. vehicle. I've only painted one mm. vehicle in the past eight years. So that's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> And what about yeah, yeah. what about army favorite army events? I, I mean, Marty, you've got I, I guess Marty still it's Lumineth for you. Uh huh. Oh yeah. 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 So what um, events? Your yeah favorite favorite arm, painted army. That's that's tough. That is really tough. I I I like a lot of my armies for different reasons. Like converting yeah. the 
Whirlwind's Edge army was really fun, right? Because it was all like custom builds and things like that. A lot of stuff that I literally just made from parts, you know, yeah. like no model was what it was. Doing the rat cast was great because I think that there's a wonderful story behind it. And, you know, a whole red non-metallic mm. army was, I, I think, looked really good. Um, you know, my Sons of Behemoth were really fun because it's, they're all Frankensteinian giants that are my own creation, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, so I, I really have to say, I, I don't know that I could pick a single army. I, I love more mm. than any of them. I think, I, and the reason I say that is because the armies that I've put a lot of time into have all been rewarding for different reasons. Sure. Right. Yeah. And, and, it's and hard also, to I judge get that against cool. each other. Yeah. The question is problematic. I, I get that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. like, something between, like, Iron Jaws, Doc, Sylvaneth, Ratcast, and Whirlwind's Edge, and. Mm. Yeah, like uh, in that, in that, and 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 my um, Slanesh, right? Like somewhere in that space. <laughs> I don't. Know. I, I if I can borrow from the movie thing, um, I I always struggle when pe uh, people ask me, or it's like uh, when, when people find out I'm a movie snob, raised by movie snobs. Like, well, mm. what is the greatest movie ever made? And I always come down to these two choices of a film called Chimes at Midnight and The Last Emperor. Um, and they yeah. could not be further removed from each other in terms of subject mm. matter, art style, runtime, etc. And so even if I think there is an objective answer somewhere, it's 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 comparing like an Apple and uh, a computer monitor, like or right. bad example, a bad example. No, but no, like it's not. Apple it's comparing an Apple it. and a computer computer monitor and saying what's the better item? Yes. <laughs> right. <It's> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, yeah. What does that mean? So, um, they're technically excellent in, 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 in those regards. And, like, I, it, it, sometimes it's about, like, I had more fun doing this, or I got to flex some creative muscles I haven't done before, or um, taking it to a mm -hmm. specific event. And then at that event, I got to meet, like, I got to do the five new friends thing, which is which is a, a, a meme for, for 2023. And it's like, well, it does does that influence how much I appreciate this model? Like, uh, clearly the one that sticks out for everyone when, when people look at my work, and you can go you can even Google me um, uh, on, on my office's computers, and one of the first things that comes up is my Avalanor. And yeah, the Avalanor yeah. is, is, is something where it's like, I don't want to say I despise it, but I never want to paint something like that again. <laughs> It was yeah. like my attempt at trying to do something opalescent based on like a six step thing that I got from Facebook, like on the Evier metal page. And then I didn't mm -hmm. do it correctly because I just didn't follow the tutorial very well. And it turned into this monstrosity, which like I took a month and a half break from. And I, I appreciate the model. It, everyone says it's like, oh, you got to like, I may enter it in Nova because I haven't done that yet. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But like, it's it's just a matter of uh, uh, finding the thing that I appreciate the most, having spent all of that time on, and not regretting mm -hmm. one second of it, in my opinion, Thanks. is what I would consider to be my best model. And that's why I'm saying I want it to be this Elden Ring piece. I don't mm -hmm. want to cram it. And um, there's like all of the... Um, uh, emotional adage where it's like this is the character that I got to create in a video game and give them like a story on top of everything else. Um, nice. So I'm still going to stick with the Cathalar, Lumineth, um, but there's a lot of stuff I really like about uh, like uh, in the slideshow was the my proxy for the Contorted Epitome. And I had this idea and it's like I knew it was going to look cool when I started envisioning it and then I put it together and it's it's really just a worthwhile like crazy looking composition which has a story all its own <laughs> yeah so very good that's all probably right, my favorite it. for the uh the slaves to darkness so very nice all right i'm gonna zoom through some pictures as we call it let's let's bring this to a close here we've been going for a while i think we think we can wrap yeah. it up uh hey everybody if you haven't hit like yet you should do so click that like button there's 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 more than you that have hit like click that button Click subscribe, do all those things. But let's. Uh, this is my Marathi. Let's go through some of the other pictures here. Um, she was a lot of fun. Obviously, a big centerpiece. Saved her. She was the very last thing I painted for my doc. Still love how she came out to this day. I I think she's, uh, you know, just 
Mm -hmm. I don't know, she's just a gorgeous model. Like, I really think Marathi is a, a beautiful model. They did an incredible job with the sculpt. In mm -hmm. Crip Shadow, there is an Boy. entire web series called Best of the Worst. Sure. Uh, Tyler, some Plague Bearers here, buddy. We got your stuff in there. Uh, Tyler, oh, no. we're going to talk about how to take photos. That's going to be our next lesson <laughs> we need to learn. Uh, yeah, just, uh, make, that's, make, that's... make them a little... Make them a little fuzzy, right? Just put them on your bed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nailed it. Got it. Uh, and uh, hey, thank you, AG. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, you can see we can see some of Tyler's plague bears here. They look really cool. Great stuff. There's you got. We got. Uh, we're gonna jump through a bunch of Tyler's. I'm sure all yours are like in sequence, so it's uh, coming up here. This is your. You got a little beast of chaos boy here. Yeah. Uh, there's the plague drones. Is this the first or the second unit? Tyler, That's the second uh, unit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the second I, unit. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna show you the first. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Hey, hey, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, very cool, very cool stuff. And then we got a little plague tree thing, the gross tree that yep. I made. Uh, First train of painted. Got some Sylvaneth. Some of the some of the birth of my overuse of pink and teal as a color scheme, uh, with my uh, my my combination spite rev tree revs here. Because you never know what you're gonna <laughs> use, so why not just model them and be both? That's what I say. I always do think of that one as yeah the apex of of your condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, you, you've, you've, you, I think you've, you've you, you know you've got your condition a little more under control, but sure. that was the apex. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is my uh, this right here is my what's her name? Uh, what's what's her name? The um, Draka. This is my Draka. Uh, mm. Yeah, because I don't like the main Draka model, and so I did this instead. I just a big female tree lord person. Uh, it's a very, very, very old creature caster model. Yeah. Uh, some art boys. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Uh, some art boys here. Uh, these are fun guys. Uh, this is fun because it was fun to mess with the banner and do the cool stuff on the banner. And also, you know, you talk about things that stick in your mind. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what my favorite thing about this unit is, Tyler? This this Ard Boys unit. Ard Boys? Oh. Uh, Marty, you can guess too. If you like. What? Sure. What do you uh, think I'm, my I'm favorite thing about this Ard Boys unit is? Uh. Well, I remember you making a video about the blue. Sure. Sure. Um, I don't remember if. Well, the thing is, is that I'm not a fan of lava basing, so if you made a video on them having lava bases, I didn't watch it. Sorry. That's fine. Yes, I did. Uh, I did do a video on lava yeah. bases, but that's not. I did multiple videos on lava bases, but no, it's not what it is. Yeah. I'll give you, uh, Tyler. You want to uh, make a banner? guess? The banner. I mean, the banner's sick. That 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 stands out the most. But sure. uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm sure yeah. it's uh, probably. And yes, uh, for chat, Aaron Lovejoy, a miniature monthly Aaron Lovejoy. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a titan among men, Aaron Lovejoy, and my brother from another mm -hmm. mother. Uh. Yeah, like, I was happy with the banner. I was happy with all that. Here's my honest answer. You notice how the center of this drum is stained slightly brown in an irregular mm. way, as though he's been striking the center of it where the icon is repeatedly? That looks <laughs> yeah. very natural to me as to how a drum head looks, especially a very old drum head that's been hit many times by a... Stain. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, that looks great. It's a very small little detail, but I sat there and thought, how do I make this look like it's been used repeatedly? Mm. And it looks like it's been struck multiple times, focusing more toward the center. And it was just some light, repeated stippling over multiple times with like some seraphim sepia or something. Such a simple mm. effect. And yet, it was like my favorite thing. I don't know. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's the little things. I still yeah, remember that all these years later. Uh, some bird riding iron jaws. These are these are my uh, these are my iron jaws that stole birds. Uh, they've got they've got the uh, stormcast griff birds because uh, it's funny to me. So that way I can have both mm -hmm. eggs and bacon. You gotta have a full breakfast. The uh, the <laughs> barnyard buster, uh, as it were. Hey, there he is. There's my there's my guy on on death chicken. Uh, I always said the story here was that my 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 mega boss rides a. Uh, Maw Crusher that is a mix of a Lord of Change that has mated with a Maw Crusher. 
Uh, mm. I won't ask any more details, but obviously he's got the big flaming rooster <laughs> up on the banner. I love a flaming rooster on a banner. I won't say any more about that, but you can read that however you want. Uh, that goes back to our Warhammer Age of Reckoning days. Mm. And that was a fun thing to paint a giant flaming rooster on a banner. Uh, this is my Slaughter Queen on Cauldron. Uh, still one of my favorite things ever. I just love the Cauldron model. I think it's super cool, even though it is very strange. Um, but obviously this is heavily converted with more of the, uh, more of the, like, little dudes holding up blood pools and, you know, just blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. Blood, blood, blood. So just, I made it, you know, we had to go bigger. I added more spikes, more, more junk, more nonsense. It's always a fun thing to do. Uh, Marty, here's a nice selection of all your characters. From your Lumineth army? Yes, I do love using my in collage app to, to mm -hmm. show people a lot of figures in a very small space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have like 78 different saved photos of like different in collage mixes of people, of my models. Um, really unique and wonderful more... skin tones. Uh, yeah. Very, very um, unique to was... your elves. Yeah, just very quickly, I wanted to make sure like um, uh, I didn't want them just to be like Tolkien, like regular people in ear makeup i wanted them to look like um the hellboy elves basically that was the sure. closest thing i could um and i did a lot of different skin tests um also one of the uh, one of the things that's very time consuming when painting models to a high standard is their eyes so i found a foolproof way of never having to paint a single sure. pupil and it's just like give them glowing yellow eyes mm. perfect done and dusted so much, it's mm. so much easier like, even though I'm painting, yes, I'm painting yellow and then, like, a, a, a glow in the center and stuff like that, it, it doesn't have to be very as precise as, like, what we would perceive to be normal human eyes. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, ev ev all of the conversions are here, even even the unit champions. Um, it's it's just, great stuff. Yeah. Thank you. So, an old conversion, speaking of somebody asked about Marble earlier, this is my Queen Kalita. Uh, I had to throw a Tomb Kings thing in here just in case Tristan is still watching. Um, this is my Queen Kalita on her, her Royal Sphinx um, with all her little snakes and stuff like that on there. Uh, so, you know, she's, she's, this is my Tomb Queen on on uh, on Sphinx. So, that's a very old model. But, I mean, my God, I think I, this is like one of the earliest hobby cheatings is doing the marble for this guy's body. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> it's all on a square base. That's how, that's how you know. It is on a square base. That's right. Uh, Many years ago. Marty... Marty, which one was the Cathalar? Top left or top uh, middle? Uh, turquoise robes, blonde hair. Right here. This group. Yeah. Okay. Top center. Okay. Top center. Yeah. Gotcha. I knew it was one of those two. I couldn't remember. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. yeah she, she's wearing like a costume from like Witcher 3 that I modified. Sure. Yeah. Uh, little little made from a Splash model. Uh, for some fun tattoo action. I, uh, this was fun because I actually made it. I looked at the art in the book and then modeled his tattoos after the old Kragnos art, the like cave art. Oh uh, yeah. So that was fun. Marty's nice. whole army with its the 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 actual picture. There you go. There's your cow mountain that you never want to paint again, but you got one. Yep. And uh, more little Sylvaneth oh, people. Excuse me. And then my original thing that I the first army I painted when I got into uh, AOS, which was my Bretonian Stormcast, my Brettcast, all laid yeah. out on a wooden table. There you go. And that's it. All right, folks. We got through all the photos. But hey, for you out there watching, hit like, hit subscribe, do all those fun things that make all the dings. We appreciate you watching. We hope we answered your question and motivated you to get some hobby done. At least maybe hopefully you got some painting done during this nice three-hour session. Tyler, do you feel ready to do that Stormcast army? I think so, yes. I feel much more ready. And uh, yes, I I know what I need. I have a sense of what I need to do now. So thank you guys for... Tonight, this was awesome. We hit our average. Congrats, everybody. We did it. Good work. Three hours. Uh, at three hours a show <laughs> times 440 shows. I, I don't know how many days. I didn't look up. I don't know where he figured out how long the total playlist <laughs> length is. I need to figure out where he went to look at yeah, that. Yeah, but this um, was not going to be a 90-minute show. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, um, we'll leave with this. Cha Chaplain Grimaldus, salutations, Kit Bash question. Looking to convert 40K Beastmen to other old hammer chaos like Wolfmen, Pigmen, etc., what other mini line can I pull from that will blend in well? Oh boy, that's a good question. You need they just made that forty k beastman kill team. Uh, well, yeah, but he wants other like types of heads. That's the thing would be the main uh, thing, right? Like pig heads and stuff like that. Wow, I don't know. Maybe 
maybe Malifo would have some stuff. It's a little smaller scale, but it probably wouldn't be too bad. I know they have like some pig people and weird stuff like yeah. that. So maybe maybe that yeah, War, War Machine War Machine has some yeah, like pig maybe people. maybe yeah, some yeah, yeah. words. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be probably look around there. But that's a that's a tough question. That's a stumper at the end. But anyways, hey, hit like, mm -hmm. do all those things. If you want to support the channel, you can do so. There's a Patreon down there. Speaking of hobby, if you want to take your next step on your hobby journey, well, that Patreon is focused on review and feedback and doing just that thing. Uh, and we'd, we'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, we thank you so much for watching. Next week will be the GHB. We'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>